Right, that's called the case. People said Michigan versus Isaiah Williams. Council, please state your appearance for the record. Good morning, Your Honor. Danielle Rusevenix, Assistant Attorney General on behalf of the people. Alex Peterson on behalf of the people. And good morning, Your Honor. Danny, I'm on behalf of Mr. Williams. However, as the court is aware, Mr. Williams wishes to represent himself, so I am merely standby counsel for Mr. Williams this morning. Well, I don't know that I did. I am prepared to proceed, Your Honor. I am prepared. I just know that uh, Mr. Williams was found competent and he is adamant about representing himself, so I am prepared to assist him in terms of being prepared to proceed, Your Honor. I want to be clear about that. I just don't want to offend Mr. Williams' desire to speak for himself. That's all. Mr. Williams? Yes, uh, Mr. Williams, uh, or, or, yes, I wish to uh, represent myself. I felt as though that the Holy Spirit has directed me to stand, and so I wish to stand. Um, I understand, I think, that part. Um, you are sure that you want to represent yourself? I am confident that you want. All right. You understand, Mr. Williams, that you are facing charges that could amount to life in prison. I'm fully aware that you are. All right. You understand also, sir, that there's great uh, difficulty in potentially representing yourself that you may have because I would make you abide by all of the procedures and rules of the court. And I would show you no deference. You would have to know those rules and abide by those rules the same as the people. You understand that? Yes, I do, Your Honor. And uh, you have to be fully aware. And that's why I stand because the Holy Spirit has inspired me, you understand, know, that God said, for me to stand. The Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, this for me to take a stand before this court. The accusation has been brought against me. It required me to take and give the answer. I don't think no one else can. And I'm just asking well, the court to give, you know, and but I see what it is. Mr. Williams, you understand that Miss Woodson would not be answering. She'd be consulting with you, but making sure that anything that you want done is done in an appropriate fashion before the court. You understand that that's her role and to advise you as to how you should proceed in the case. Um, as I you know, said, Your Honor, I believe that for me to take a stand, and I would have to take and be willing to whatever the court has demanded me to do. I'm fully aware of the courts and what I've been given. As a matter of fact, the Holy Spirit was telling me this morning that it is for me to abide by the courts. You have been appointed by God to represent the law, and I'm here to take a stand and represent me as the person accused of the law. And that I think it would be required for me to answer any questions that the court has in regards to this matter. And I don't think that Mrs. the attorney Wilson or anyone else can speak on my behalf other than myself. Okay, but do you understand what this proceeding is? Uh, I thought it was going to be our hearing uh, that I've been asking for for a year. Okay. This, but, this is what he finally have come to who to finally present me with a hearing. Because okay, but do, you, for a year. but do you know what this hearing is about? Well, um, it is my understanding that they had a witness that they were bringing for. No, 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 hold on. There are going to be a number of witnesses. Oh, good. Because I counted the witnesses that I had that the prosecutor had brought against me was over 87 witnesses. And I hope that all 87 witnesses are here because I wish to take a cross and examine. Okay. Mr. Yes. Mr. Mr. Williams, you understand that this is not the trial in the case if it gets bound over to circuit court. That is my understanding. Yes, okay. Sir. What do you understand is going to happen today? Well, I hope that the court would have been presented with ground the other though that the charges get hold on hold on hold on uh, mr mr williams hold on hold on 
maybe I asked my question inartfully. What do you think comes can come out of this proceeding? To determine whether or not at the court have enough ground to take a full wheel for trial. Okay. And you understand how that occurs? I hope that because you will adjudicate this matter, then we bring this around. And you understand that if you decide that you're, you understand you would have a right to cross-examine the witnesses. Yes, I hope that that would be permissible. All right. And you understand that the standard is not beyond a reasonable doubt in this case. You understand that, sir? Uh, Well, what do you believe that the standard this court's going to apply to the evidence that the people are going to offer? What standard of proof? I was think, and don't quote me, but I believe that it would be that it has shown to the court that what has been presented is to show that the claim of death has been shown and that I am the perpetrator of the death. And you feel as though that enough has been presented here before this court to claim that that has been done. Now, if I'm incorrect, please correct me, please. Well, you understand, sir, that I am not here to offer you any legal advice. That's one of the reasons that you were appointed an attorney. So yeah. that if you don't understand something, it won't be up to me to educate you as to that. Oh, uh, excuse me if I gave that impression that I was looking for you to do that. No, I was only asking that you provide what you've been appointed for. That's all I'm asking from you. I didn't think that I was asking it from you. Now, if I maybe need to reiterate what I was saying to make it more plain, that I'm willing to understand you're taking deals here, whatever you do, has been acceptable in the court because you have been put in that position. And the Holy Spirit tells me you've been appointed by God, so I know you're going to do God's will. I claim that. Now, I'm not going to ask you to take and give me the law or teach me. I'm just asking you to take and do what you feel is yes. And I'm going to stand here and listen. And okay, well, Mr. Mr. Williams, in listening to you, what if I felt that the just thing to do would be to make sure that you had an attorney representing you? What would you say to that? And that you get every opportunity to consult with Ms. Woodson to make sure that all of the questions that you want asked are asked. What if I said that was the just thing to do? What would you say to that? I was taking take that into consideration, and as I stated, I don't believe you would want to go against God's will. Because I believe you to be a man of God because you're supported by God. Now, if God wants me to stand as my own attorney, I'm quite sure you would not go against God's will and tell me that you don't want me to stand as my own attorney. That's how I stand. But what if I felt the just thing to do in this case would be to have you be represented by Miss Woodson? Then I would say that you're going against God's will. I see. And Mr. Williams, you really feel that you can represent yourself? No. God didn't tell me I'm going to represent myself. God told me to stand, and He said the Holy Spirit will give me the word to take it stay before the court. So I stand. All right. But. Mr. Williams, you understand that you're asking me to allow you to represent yourself, not just stand, but to represent yourself. 
Yes, I'm going to have my neck. Okay, but you just told me that you were told not to represent yourself. No, I don't think I was saying that. I said that the Holy Spirit, when I was involved, would give me the word to say to address the court. Now, that is my desire to take it to the will of God. And I feel as though that God is capable of entering the court and addressing the court in the manner it should be addressed. I don't have no doubt that my power of my Heavenly Father. And he has already understand that we know that he's quite capable of just doing what I need to be done. So I don't have any fear. Not at all. And I don't think you would have any fear for God's power. Thank you, Your No, that I, I don't have any fear of his power. What I do have fear of is, is that you're not clear on how to represent yourself before a court. And that in that because of that, that you won't get a just hearing. Because that's my job. My job is to make sure that the hearing is a just hearing and a fair hearing. And that you understand what you're doing. And I'm unclear right now as to whether or not you fully appreciate that. Try to take it and make it a little more plain a bit. I'm not making you feel comfortable. And well, I don't. You can represent it at the very least. I'm not saying that I'm going to take it come forward and say that I'm going to be standing here mute. Waiting for the spirit to speak. No, I don't hear the voice to take and iterate what the spirit gives me to say. And I will be challenging every day that I feel as though the court is going against the law that was given by Moses and Jesus Christ, his priest, to take and what represent, you understand, the derogation of that law. So I'm only, you understand, here standing here saying that. I don't have any problem, and I'm not feeling as though that I'm confident or incompetent. I'm feeling as though that all I need to do is have you feel comfortable to know that I don't need Attorney Wilson because I wouldn't be happy with her because I'm going to get him. Maybe I should tell him explain to you why we want to have Attorney Wilson. And I, excuse me, let me see the score, please. I asked Ms. Wilson for a copy of the motion for discovery. I felt as though it was paramount in my case for murder that I have a copy of the motion for discovery. The, I have asked the two motion. No, 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 Mr. Wilson. That's going to be part of our problem here because this is my court. Oh, excuse me. Oh, forgive me. Yes. Forgive me. I will this time. So are you telling me? That you don't have discovery? No, I've been here, been begging for it. Your Honor, may I address that? The law is clear. It's by and through his attorney. Right. January 24th, 2022, his first attorney got every bit of discovery. By and through his attorney, he has this discovery. Thank you. You are. I could speak behind her. She took a statement before the court. The prosecutor attorney stated, you know, in the last time I was here on March 23rd. Oh, we gave him the motion for discovery. We gave him the police report. Your Honor. You okay, know but, but Mr. 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 Williams, Mr. Williams, you're using words, and that's what troubles me. You're saying a motion for discovery. Yeah. Are you talking about the motion for discovery, or are you talking about the actual discovery? The motion for discovery has a requirement for the court to present to the defense attorney to prepare their case. And this has not been done. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stop. Stop for a moment. You started to address me saying you asked for the motion for discovery. Yes. So are you asking for the motion for discovery? Or were you asking for the discovery itself? 
And do you understand the difference? Well, now, there, there, you have to clarify that because I No, I don't. The I, th that's the problem, Mr. Williams. I don't have to clarify that. Oh. You have to make your argument to me. Okay. You started your argument just now about the motion for discovery. Yeah. I'm telling you there's a difference between the two. Okay. And so I'm wondering which one you're talking about. Oh, would that mean? No, no, no. I don't need to see any papers. I no, need no, to know no, which one. No, just yes, listen to me. Now. Which one are you talking about? I believe it's the United States Supreme Court does have rules for 12. What's your father's That's why I was looking here to make sure I'm correcting the statute for the motion for discovery. And I was going to look here in regards to what it states. And it states here what she stated is prosecutor attorney stated in October, I mean, what, that, March 23rd, that we give him part of what we gave him the police report. But that's the first thing it states. The first step is the first sentence states motion for discovery. It's what? It takes the state, and it would be better than what? The names of the witnesses against the prosecutor. The prosecutor is a witness against the defendant that he may have had the time to address the matter before the court. And I'm here trying to take a deal here, but they got me all tied up here with this in here because I guess they think I'm going to run away or something. Or so they feel that I must be bound now like a threat to the court. So let's well. get back and reach in here and find that uh, motion for discovery. And what it said, because I, I don't want to take him to uh, be here before the court and wasting your time. Well, uh, too late. And, uh, that yeah. While Mr. Williams looks at that, can you briefly approach? Please. Can I have white noise, please? Yes, sir. This is the first paragraph of the state here. The name and last known address of persons whom the state intends to call. What are you reading? Together from? with the relevant written and records, statement, moral, it says here, and containing, you understand, substantially preservating, you understand, reports and their war statements. And a list, you understand, of, and I don't want, this is basically what it just, he was asking me, what am I talking about? And I'm saying, this is what I read, and it says here, to allow the district attorney to actually address the court. And this is what they have not been willing to be read. And I went here, not once, not twice, but three times, I provided to, uh, to the court. And to the prosecutor asking for a motion for this government. I've asked, not this attorney, but even attorney, you understand, they did give me before. And every one of them say, I got it. I got the police report. I don't need nothing else. Now, I know I'm illiterate. And I stand, you understand, gladly being illiterate. But I'm not going to sit here and tell me you want somebody to represent me and don't feel as though they don't need a motion for discovery to know everything, you know what I'm saying? The, the, required. Sir, I don't Mr. Williams, it, sir. Mr. Williams, as I'm to understand, the motion for discovery, to the extent there was one, already has been done. The discovery has been provided. So I'm not sure what you're talking about at this point. What do you like to me? Mm. What what are you trying to hand to me? The motion for discovery. There already has been the motion for discovery. It's already been provided. This has been provided to you, and they have given that to, to, to the defense. They've given the discovery to the defense. Everything that requires in the motion for discovery, they've given it to the defense. 
that they have, that everything is required. They've given it. Oh, I get then I must be in another world somewhere because I'm not here yeah. before you because I don't know. I don't have it. They keep telling me I have a copy of it. Well, you can take it in. Please tell them to give me a copy of this if they have already given me everything to me. So, Mr. Williams, how are you going to represent yourself? At my own council place. No. How are you going to represent yourself? If you're saying that you don't have the discovery, which I understand, certainly for Mr. Feaster, who was before Ms. Woodson, that you had been provided. And, and I said to the court, and I tell the court, that is not adequate. It's not what the law required. And that you, the judge, you are bound to what? Support the law. And, I am. And I'm asking you, do you feel as though they have given me? Sir, I don't, I don't know what they've necessarily given you. I'm not supposed to know. And I'm, well, then that's why I'm explaining to you they have not. They have not given me what the court required. Not according to the rules and regulations of the law. All right. Sir? Anything else you want to say to the court before I rule? That's all I have to say then. Thank you. Ms. Wood, Ms. Woodson, anything you want to say to the court regarding this? Um, no, Your Honor. I leave it to the court's discretion. I think that Mr. Williams has made enough of a record for the court to make a very just and wise decision. Anything else in the people? Your Honor, I think you made a, a record under people v. Russell that you know, we have to inquire as whether this, this request is unequivocal, knowing, voluntary, intelligent. Um, I think you've asked the questions. I, I don't know if the answers rise up necessarily, but I'll leave that to the court's discretion. However, under people v. Daniels and MRE 611A, I believe it is, there are certain witnesses that will be called that Mr. Uh, Williams is just not entitled to cross-examine himself. We have to cross-examine him. Through counsel, specifically Denise Fraser, Fraser Daniel, uh, Mary Leslie Bryant, Elizabeth Reese. Um, these are all uh, other tax victims. And one is the mother of the chief's victim in this case. There are allegations and evidence that, that will be coming in of domestic violence, physical violence, and sexual violence. And under the case law, he is not entitled to question those victims. And so I'd ask if the court ultimately lets him reference, represent himself at this stage, that he be not allowed to question those witnesses um, specifically. Do you understand that part, Mr. Williams? I understand what the prosecutor has said, and I can understand the prosecutor's actions because they probably understand too, uh, already understand that I have protected him because I filed. Actually, okay. the of Miss, Mr. Williams, listen closely to my question. Yes. Do you understand that there would be witnesses that the people would put on that if you are to represent yourself, you could not, nor would this court allow you to question that? And I could not understand why not. That the court would take a fill as though that they and, and Mr. Williams, Mr. Williams, that's where we run into our problem. There seems to me to be a lot you don't understand about how this would work. I can't, in good conscience, given what you've said today, um, come to the conclusion that while your waiver might be unequivocal, at least at one point you equivocated on it, but even if I were to say that, I can't say that this waiver of counsel in this case is knowingly being made, is understandingly and intelligently being made. Um, I will say that I think to an extent, it's voluntary, but I think I need all of those characteristics to allow your waiver waiver to go forth, particularly on a charge such as this one of um, 
open murder. So without anything else, your request to represent yourself in this case, the court having been, having made the finding is denied. Ms. Woodson will represent you. Yeah, and I'd like to address the court and let the court know that this here is what you have stated before the court and it's final and that it will go as though that the matter has been adjudicated here in your court that I will now take it to the United States Supreme Court. I'm going to go to the federal court and be charged with your denial. And ask that the court provide me with a copy of your denial. Or I can address it as the matter has been adjudicated here before you. If you gave me leave to take it to a higher court. That's all I have. Your request in all of that, that I at least could garner, your request for a stay for leave to appeal my decision is denied. We will proceed today. Thank you, Your Honor. So it's and you are prepared to go for it. Yes, sir. May I just have the two minute break? You want to talk to him? Oh. Can we just have three preliminary matters before we take a quick break that I wanted sure. to ask about? We had witnesses here since 8 a.m. Um, they have asked me about what the schedule will be for, for the court today. Um, and uh, additionally, um, just for me, does the court wish me to question a bench or the, or the table or the podium or the table? And I'm going to ask for a mutual sequestration order with the exception of Detectives Rajo, Iverson, and Special Agent Foss. All right. Like no objection, Your Honor. To the sequestration order? Okay. Witnesses are hereby ordered sequestered. As to scheduling, as my days go, I start out looking at it one way and then it turns into something else. I just because I think we have some we could probably release for a break early since we won't get to them to probably during the day. Yes. And I I don't know what order you're going to call them in. I do have something that I have to take care of between around twelve to twelve thirty. And so I was looking to have the lunch at that point, try to take care of my mat other matters and then proceed into the afternoon. I will go as late as anybody wants to go. Um, the people in terms of the order that you're going to call the witnesses to the extent you want to put some want some of the witnesses to leave and then have them on call. The court's going to have given what's happened this morning. No objection to that whatsoever. OK. Was that all three things? Podium or table? Do you want me to question the witnesses? You can with our fancy new system here, you can do either. So wherever you wherever you are comfortable and when you're questioning, unless you feel comfortable, I'm I'm not going to require that you even stand when you're questioning. So I don't I don't have a problem with that. All right. And so you wanted to talk to him. OK, so we'll take him back and let you have a private conversation. Court will stand in recess. All right. Court for County Washington State of Michigan is now back in session. Thank you. You may be seated. Yes, bring the defendant out, please. Can we have Mr. Boyd back in seat, please? Thank you. What would you identify as now? Just saying. <laughs> Is that Miss Wilson behind? Are you going to have a seat? Yeah. Thank you. We're back on the record in the case of People's State of Michigan versus Isaiah Williams. I was informed on the recess. Council is present, and I was informed during the recess, Ms. Woodson, you had something that you needed to state on the record. That's correct, Your Honor. Uh, as the court is aware, the court gave me a break and an opportunity to speak to Mr. Williams. 
um, during that break, our communication was not very effective, and Mr. Williams has informed me that it's not so much that he wants to represent himself, he doesn't want me representing him. And to the extent it requires an answer, I would just indicate that Mr. Williams, because of the court's ruling, gets an attorney. He does not get an attorney of his choice. So understand the record. Are we ready to proceed? All right. Ready as well, Your Honor. All right. You may call your first witness. Ma'am, please come forward, Ms. Swan. Take a seat, raise your right hand. Please sign me swear or affirm the testimony about the gift be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. Have a seat. State your first and last name and spell it for the record, please. Daniel, C-E-N-I-S-E. Thank you. You may inquire. Thank you. May I call you Denise? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Denise, tell me your full name. Were you once known by the name Denise Williams? Do you know the defendant Isaiah Williams? How do you know Isaiah Williams? I was married to him. Okay. Uh, how long were you married to him? Um, about four years, five, four or five years. Do you see Mr. Williams in the courtroom? Yes. Can you point him out, please, and describe what he's wearing? I'm wearing the Your let the record reflect that Ms. Frazier Daniel has identified the defendant. Without objection, record shall so reflect. Your Honor, may I approach? You may. I'm approaching with what has been marked people's proposed exhibits one, two, and three. Can you take a look at these pictures and tell me if you recognize them, please? Yes. Exhibit one. Who is in exhibit one? My daughter, Alisa. Okay. What's Alisa's full name? Alisa Susan Williams. Okay. Um, about how old is Alisa in that picture? Uh, she is Ivana Mando. Okay. How about Exhibit 2? Alisa. Uh, how old is she in that picture? Around uh, 89 months. Who is in Exhibit 3? Is that a younger picture of Mr. Williams that he looked like um, several decades ago? Yeah. Okay. I'd ask, Your Honor, that Exhibits 1 through 3 be admitted to evidence. Any objection or why, dear? Purposes only. All right. Exhibits one, two, and three are admitted. Denise, what is Olisa's date of birth? I was 10, 19. Were you married to Isaiah Williams at the time of her birth? Yes. Okay. Is Isaiah Williams her, her biological father? No. Is he her legal father? Is he on her birth certificate? Yes. Your Honor, may I approach? You may. Denise, I'm handing you people's for imposed exhibit nine. Do you recognize what's in exhibit nine? What's that? Okay. Whose birth certificate is that? Okay. And it has your name and Mr. Williams' name as the parents on that birth certificate, correct? Yes. Your Honor, I'd ask that Mr. Williams put the bag on the floor. Mr. Williams, is there a problem with the bag, sir? No, no, no. Hold on, Your Honor, you might have to take me back to the bullpen, but it's in the fourth and the resistance out of order. And so if you want to do this, sir, do it. Just it out of my ear. Thank you. Bye. Let's go. 
No, no, you will have a, Mr. Williams, Mr. Williams, you will have a seat. You will have a seat. Sit down. Now, sit down. You will stay there. Please remove the bag from him so that he is not disrupted. Counsel, you may proceed. Thank you. Denise, I have to ask, um, but what year did you marry, meet Isaiah Williams? What he just displayed in the courtroom, is that the Isaiah that you know? Yes. Okay. How how was Isaiah during treat his treatment of you during your marriage? Uh, abusive. Physically abusive? Physically abusive. I uh, ended up in the hospital. Objection as to relevance. This is all in the other acts evidence. This was all filed in a year and a half ago, Your Honor. Not only is it directly related to his motive, premeditation in this case, given the death of her daughter, but again, this is all admissible under 768.27b, propensity of violence against women. Objections overruled. You may continue. When you when you uh, became impregnated with Belisa, was Isaiah incarcerated at that time? I believe so. Okay. Were you two separated but still like, legally married? <clears throat> when was the last time you saw your daughter, Belisa Williams? Oh. She was nine months old at the time. And she was born August 10th, correct? Yes. Um, you've been interviewed, it's fair to say, by police many times over the last 41 years, correct? Yes. Do you recall giving the date of April 29th, 1982? That sounds familiar. Okay. Let me ask this. What state were you in when you last saw your daughter, Lisa Williams? Was that in Ohio? Yeah. What city in Ohio? Were you living there at the time? Okay. Who were you living there with? I was living with my friend Diane. At that time, if you were living with your, your friend Diane, were you separating yourself from the marriage of Isaiah Williams? Yes. Were you planning on leaving Isaiah Williams? Yes. How did you meet Isaiah Williams? Uh, he's a thanks to my parents. Did you eventually begin dating him? Yeah. Okay. Did the how did the relationship start out? Started out good. Okay. Tell me when it was not good. Uh, it was uh, after we had moved in together. Okay. Do you recall approximately when that was? Uh, probably about around seventy-seven. When you moved in together, where did you and Isaiah Williams live? On the in Ann Arbor. In the city of Ann Arbor? Yeah. Is that here in Washtenaw County? Yeah. Did you have another child at that time when you first were dating and living with Isaiah Williams? Yeah. Who was that child? Elizabeth. Did Elizabeth continue to live with you? Uh, she lived with us, yeah, for a time. At some point, did she not continue to live? Yeah. Tell me about why that was. Uh, she uh, had witnessed the abuse that I may have told on me. So um, uh, my mother uh, had uh, had to touch the other. When you're living with him in the city of Ann Arbor, huh? you're not married yet, correct? Right. Tell me how he's physically abusive to you. Tell me what is happening to you. I've been slapped and choked, and I've been told that I passed out. I've been um, Did you ever call the police on him? I have not. Have you ever gone to the hospital because of your injuries? Yes. Have you ever, before you even married Isaiah Williams, did you ever leave him because of this abuse? 
How many times do you think you left him? Tell us about and why you would go back with Mr. Lopes. Uh, he would claim that uh, he would be using me more and always bring out the chat. Your Honor, may I approach? You may. Um, I am approaching with two documents. Both of them are Exhibit 10. Do you recognize these documents, Denise? Yeah. Okay, the first page is the certificate, correct? What's the second page? Second page is when the... Sorry, Mayor. Okay. Well, what date and what year were you married to Mr. Williams? And uh, uh, January 23rd, 1979. 1979? And in what state were you married? Okay. Your Honor, I'd ask that Exhibit 10 be admitted as a two page document. Any objection of what, dear? No objection for exam purposes, Your Honor. Exhibit 10 is admitted. Tell me about, uh, well, where were you living at the time? Tell me about why you and Isaiah Williams got married in the state of Ohio. Um, it was a quick way to get married. Whose whose decision was that? Mutual. Uh, okay. When you came back to Michigan, did the abuse continue? Yeah. I'm going to take you back to Valentine's Day of 1979. Um, were you living here in Michigan at that time? Were you living with Isaiah Williams? Yeah. You were legally married to him, correct? Correct. Was there an assault that happened to you at that time that involved a weapon? Yeah. Tell me about that. Um, I was being with a rifle and I was uh, trying to conceal my, myself and I ended up with a broken arm. Do you recall if, if Mr. Williams ever fired that gun at you? Yeah. Tell me, how, tell me about that. Tell the court how, what happened. Shooting at me as I was running and I so he raised my top of my head. Well, it did not hit you though, correct? No. Um, did you report this incident to the police? Yes. Was a warrant actually issued for Mr. Williams' arrest? Yes. Do you remember whatever happened to that case? Did it ever go to court? No. Okay. Why did it not go to court? I don't know. May I approach, Your Honor? You may. Denise, I'm handing you two documents that is Exhibit 24. Um, these are some court documents. Do you recognize what these are regarding? When did you? The first time. When did you file for divorce the first time? That was in uh, 1980. Uh, are you pregnant with Elisa yet? Okay. So you tried to divorce Mr. Williams before you were pregnant with Lisa, correct? What happened to that divorce? It was dismissed. Um, do you remember why it was dismissed? Uh, he never uh, responded. He wasn't served or didn't respond? Right. So the court dismissed it? Your Honor, I'd ask that People's 24, a two-page document, it's a docket from the court as long in a court order dismissing the divorce pending. For exam purposes only, Your Honor, no objection. Exhibit 24 is admitted. Why were you trying to divorce Mr. Williams at that time? I didn't want to be married anymore. Was the abuse continuing? The approximately, if you approximately bring it back to May 1980, did you, you know, you said the divorce was dismissed. Were you separating yourself from Mr. Williams physically at that time, staying away? At that time, we talked just a, a few moments ago about him being incarcerated. Did you have a relationship with somebody else? Um, yeah, I had a Okay. And did you become pregnant with Elisa? Yeah. At that time, were you working? Yeah. Where were you working? How long did you work at the University of Michigan? I worked there uh, from 
from I think it was about 80 to 81. Were you still working there January 27th of 1981? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to bring you back to that date. Do you recall an incident where you were working that day when Mr. Williams contacted you? Yeah. Okay. Tell us about what happened that day. He had contacted me um, saying that he wanted to talk to me. And I had, um, it was on a payday. It was on a Friday. And I had, um, I had already cashed my check and I had put it in my desk. I worked um, on campus while I was working in the office and I had put it in my desk. And he, because um, I know how he is. Okay, so, explain a little more. Why were you locking your money up? Because then he would ask for it. Okay. Was that yeah. common? Yes. Okay, go ahead. So, I, um, but when he, when he puts me out of the car, the car was all packed and stuff. And I asked him where was he going, and he said that he had to get away. And, uh, and that's when we ended up in the day. Denise, let me ask you, was it your intent to move with Isaiah Williams to the city of Cincinnati in no. January of 1981? No. Okay. Um, tell me what happened in that car to you on that day. Well, he had picked up a hitchhiker and um, and he told me not to say anything. And uh, he had, and I had said something, I don't remember what it was, and he called off and slapped me. And, um, and so I, then he had me sit down on the floor of the, of the car. The floorboard of the car? Yeah. Okay. Um, did he tell you where you were going? No. When you ended up in Cincinnati, Ohio, did you just end up there? You didn't know where you were going? Did you have any of your belongings? No. And I think you testified already you had this job at U of M, correct? Right. Did you notify them you were moving to Ohio? No. Tell us what happened when we get there to Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, we ended up in the, um, ended up living a place. Um, together and he had, um, and then I, and then he noticed that I was um, getting bigger, and then we went and had a physical done, and uh, that was right. The day, the day you got in his car in Ann Arbor in January of 1981, did you yourself know you were pregnant at that time? No. Okay. Um, when you got to Cincinnati, Ohio, did you know anyone there? No, no friends or family? Um, did Mr. Williams allow you to call back to your, your family here in Michigan? Not right now. Okay. Tell us about that. How How is he stopping you from doing that? I did have access to a phone and did he control what you could do? Yeah. Did he ever threaten you? Yeah. What would he say? He would say that um, I, I called to call my parents that he would um, take me. And he had beaten you before, correct? Yeah. Is that something you were afraid of? Yes. Did you lose your job back here in Michigan ultimately because of this? Uh, yes, when I finally called them, of course, I had lost my job like two weeks later. No. No show. And I had, um, so I told my supervisor to unlock my um, door and get my cash. When you get back to Cincinnati, and I know you were, I'm going to jump uh, back a little bit. You were talking about how you discovered you were pregnant with Elisa. Before you discovered that, did Mr. Williams continue to physically abuse yeah. What would he do? When you moved to Ohio, he would just, you know, punch me and choke me. Did you ever seek out any services there in Cincinnati, Ohio, to help for any convenience? Yes, I uh, went to the woman's shelter. When you went to the women's shelter there, um, would I say ever show up? Find you? Eventually, yes. Did you go back with him? 
Yes. Tell the court, um, kind of take us through why you're going back with him. Do you, did you feel like you had a choice? Well, I, you know, he was always saying that it would be better and, you know, that it's always about the pretense of that, you know, it would be good and then that, you know, he wouldn't be beginning anymore. In that moment, would you believe him? Yeah. He could convince you? Yeah, he convinced me, say that he loves me and. You said that you started getting bigger, so you went to a clinic? Yes. Tell us about that. Tell us how that happened. Well, he was with me in the doctor's office, and um, when I realized that he probably wasn't a father, I got beaten and poked with a stick, like with a drumstick, and, um, and I felt that he was trying to make me a where was he specifically assaulting you on your body when he found out you were pregnant? Okay, can he in the stomach area? And you can go with a scratch and rip. In the following months, to him finding out, one, you're pregnant, and two, him discovering he <coughs> can't be the father. Um, did he ever talk to you about having an abortion? Did you remember? At that time, when you moved to Cincinnati, Ohio with him, did you have a job? Were you able to make some money for you? I worked as a temporary service. Yeah, that's what I was doing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and then when you moved to Cincinnati, Ohio, did you have a job? Were you able to make some money for you? Yeah, that's what I was doing. Yeah. Okay. Did Mr. Williams ever, ever demand or order you to go make some money for him in other ways? Yes, he did once. What did he say? Well, the. That was back in 79. Valentine's Day. What did he say? He told me to go and get the money. This was during a visit. And at that time, I didn't realize that my, this was after the fact that my arm was broken. And um, he wouldn't take me to the doctor. So when I left, I wrapped up and started walking. Denise, a few weeks before Elise is born. So Elise is born August 10th, correct? Is that 1981? 81. Okay. So I think if you recall telling the police you went back to Michigan around July, July 24th, maybe a few weeks before Elisa was born? Yeah. What was your purpose in going back to the state of Michigan? Going back to Michigan? Yes. Family. At that point in Ohio, is, is Mr. Williams still abusing? Yes. And you're pregnant with Elisa, correct? Is that a yes? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to remind you to use words so that the record's clear, okay, Denise? When you went back to Michigan, uh, were you intending on leaving Isaiah at that time? Yes. How did you get back to Michigan? I took the Greyhound. Did you go stay with your parents? Yeah. Where were your parents living at the time? Yeah, in Ann Arbor. Where did you uh, deliver Elisa on August 10th? At St. Joe Hospital. Did you see Isaiah Williams at that hospital? No, not until later. When did, when did you see Isaiah Williams after giving birth to your daughter? He had came to my room. Um, Again, he had a wedding ring. I had, um, I don't remember really what happened to the first one, but he had a wedding ring saying that you know, things would be good and that he would face as you know, his child. But at that time, Mr. Williams, did he acknowledge he knew he wasn't the biological father, correct? Yes. He told you he would raise Lisa as his own, correct? Correct. At that time, were you still legally married from him? Or married to him, rather? Yeah. But he showed up with a ring, correct? Is that a yes? Yes, I'm sorry. Oh. Was he asking you to get back together? Yeah. What was your state of mind at that time? 
I wasn't sure. Um, I had, um, I was being with my parents again and um, going back and forth, I guess, in my mind, but so we're not. Did you eventually decide to take Melissa and go back with Mr. Williams and say Mary to it? Did you move back to Ohio? Yeah. How about how, how old was Alyssa when you when you took her and moved back to Ohio? She's about around six months. Now we're in what maybe late 1981, early 1982. Does that sound fair? Okay. When you get back to Ohio, is Mr. Williams living up to his promises? Is he being good to you? For a minute, for, yeah. Okay. So when that minute is over, what happens? Is it physical abuse that you've already described? The punching, hitting, choking? What would trigger the abuse on you? Anything. I think I mean, when he was gone, I was fine. And then uh, I hear him coming in, I get um, thin and go, because I never know what's going to trigger me. I'm super cool. Would you ever, during this time period, oh, this is about six months old, see us beating you? Would you ever leave and, and go to shelters like you stated you had done before? Yeah. How many times do you think you did that when you lived in Ohio? Probably about twice. I think, Ms. Janice, you had told the police that at that time you believed Isaiah had other women in your in the home, correct? Yeah. Did you ever confront him about that? Yeah. What would he tell you? It was a, you know, and it wasn't true, and, but I knew it was. Was it to your benefit to continue confronting him, or did you just leave it alone? Tell us why. I didn't get another beat down. Back when you're living on Ohio with Lisa and Isaiah, are you the primary caregiver? Yes. So, when you go back to Ohio, are you working still tap jobs? I will work temp jobs, yeah, right now. Yeah. Would you ever leave Olissa with Isaiah when you would go to work? Yeah. Okay. Tell me about his care of Olissa when you would leave her in, in his care. Yeah, she would be 30. She had a 30 diaper. In, in your opinion, did he care for her properly? Mm -hmm. In December of 1981, do you recall Mr. Williams contacting your mom and telling telling her to take you back, take you back to Michigan? Yeah. Tell me about that. Well, my parents said, hey, you see about me, and when they left me, they said I should have went back with them. What, did you inquire what he meant by that? You should have gone back with them? What did that mean? I don't know. I did want to get did you at some point have to write a letter to your to your rental office, to your home, to take them off that property? Can you tell us what that was about and why that happened? He said that, um, that we had to be and that um, he wanted me to sign the affidavit saying that I was um, that I'm taking off the lease and that I'll be someone to Why did he you sign it? And had it notarized. Well, how can you tell me? How can he make you sign that? What did he do? He would just you know saying that I don't remember exactly. Would he ever threaten you? No. And did you actually type out that letter to take you and Elisa off the property, take take away any of your rights to that property? Yeah. Okay. 
Your Honor, may I approach? Yes. Denise, I'm handing you people's proposed 23. Is this the letter that we're talking about? Yeah. Um, and is that the letter that you typed December 6, 1981? Yeah. See some signatures on that. Whose signatures are on Responded and I signed it in the um, I had it with this time. Your Honor, I'd ask the people's 23 be admitted. Objection or voir dire? Objection for exam purposes only. If it's 23 is admitted. Denise, can you tell us what the, what the purpose of this, what, I don't want to say, that, what Isaiah Williams gained from this? Objection as to speculation, unless she knows. If you know, what was the purpose of signing this letter? Had he expressed to you that you should leave? The the she said probably. Well, I'm trying to. I'm trying to ask. Yes. Her. I'll sustain the objection, but I'll let you refresh. Had he had Mr. Williams actually said to you that he did not want you at that time in December of '81? You were Alyssa living at the Yeah. Did you and Alyssa actually move out at that time? Okay, where did you go? I went uh, to a friend. Did you ever go back to Michigan during that period of time to see your family? Or to see your other daughter? I did. Okay. Do you remember how long you, you stayed in Michigan before you came back to Ohio? Um, did you think about staying in Michigan at that time and not coming back to Ohio? I thought about it. Tell us why you ultimately came back to Ohio. The problems is that I that I uh, wanted I really wanted the mayor's support. Back in Ohio around March of 82, 1982, did you file for a separation at that time? Okay. Where were you living at that time? And we went with my friend. Is that the friend that you mentioned earlier, Diane? Diane, yeah. Diane Taylor? Yeah. Okay. How did you know Diane? Uh, we met at uh, work. When you're staying with Diane, is that also in the city of Cincinnati? Yeah. Are you staying and you have only with you? Yeah. Are you still her primary friend? Yeah. At that time, when you're staying with Diane, uh, is Isaiah skiing on this visiting? And at that time in March of 1982, um, if he's not visiting with her, it's fair to say he's not taking care of her on his own, correct? The end of March 1982, did you have contact with Mr. Williams um, in which he physically assaulted you again? Yes. Do you remember what happened that time? And, um, at that time, we were at Diane's mom's house, mother's house, and we had um, knocked on the door, and he took me and took me and took me and took me. I'm not talking about April, I'm talking about March. Was there an incident maybe a month before that where you found your belongings in the hallway? Do you remember that incident? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, about how much time before Alyssa is taken did that happen? If you can remember, I know I'm talking about 41 years ago, but was it a long time, a short time? It was a short time. Okay. Tell me about that. Found your mom in your hall. Yeah, packed on stuff and put them in the hallway, and when let me back into the apartment. In April of '92. You're still living with Diane? Okay. Are you still working at the, the temp jobs at that time? No. Okay. You already talked about the dates of April 29th. So about two days before that, April 27th, 1982, did Mr. Williams contact you from jail? Yes. Okay, tell me about that. Uh, he said that his brother was going to be um, Wiring some money. And he um, wanted me to, I guess it's from a question of view, and he wanted me to bring it to him. But, and I used it to get him out. So you we got him some money to get, to, to bond him out, bail him out of jail? Right. Okay. 
Was there an argument ultimately about that money? Yes, yeah, he was going to use the, uh, the whole money to pay his rent. Did you use some of the money? For transportation. To get to the jail, correct? Right. Okay. And it was Mr. Williams upset about that? Yes. What happened? Uh, that is all. Tell me about that altercation. At that point, during the physical abuse, are you, where are you at when this is happening? Well, location-wise, I'm sorry. Are you at his, at his apartment or at Diane's? I was at his apartment. Were you able to get out or did he lock you in there at some point? He had locked me in. Tell us about that. How did that happen? He had um, said that I wasn't going to go anywhere. And he had locked me in a closet. Who had Melissa at this time? Um, Diane. About how much time had passed for you were still locked in, in Mr. Williams' apartment? Had a lot of time passed? Yes. Okay. And so what happened ultimately? They ended up calling um, child protective services. And Is that because ultimately you didn't show back up at Diane's? Right. Where were you when you didn't show up at Diane's? Okay. Was that voluntarily at his place? Were you able to get Alyssa back on, on April 29, 1982? Yes. That was from CPS? Yes. Denise, let's talk about the date of April 29, 1982. Were you, again, at Diane Taylor's apartment? Yes. Was it an apartment or a house, I should add? It was like a town home. Town home? Was Diane home at the time, or was it just you and Alyssa? Diane I'm doing the math correct. I think Elisa would have been about eight, almost nine months old at that time. Does that sound about right to you? Yeah. Did Isaiah show up? Yeah. Tell us what happened. That's when he showed up. And um, yeah, when I opened the door, I had a in my arm. And he, he just, he didn't really do anything. He just said that um, he was here. I told him that he couldn't see her. And he got me down. Daughter. <laughs> Sure. Ma'am, if you want to take a break, you may. If you... Pardon? Denise, do you remember if Isaiah said anything to you or not down with your daughter? He said that I was mother. There's some water for you there, Denise. When he knocked you down, did you have Elisa in your arms? Yeah. He had taken her bed when I fell. And he ran up and up and they got the car and went off and I called the police. And they said they couldn't do anything because they found her certificate. He was her legal father, correct? Correct. Nineteen eighty-two, correct? Yeah. Denise, have you seen your daughter Elisa since that date, April 29th, nineteen eighty-two? No. That would be forty-one years this past Saturday, correct? Is that true? Get answer out loud. Yes. When you called the police, what police department did you call? Okay. Yeah. 
Was Mr. Williams eventually arrested either that night or, or the next day? Yeah. Okay. Um, do you know if he had Olisa with him at that time? Okay. Did you see Olisa at that time? Yeah. Did you go to court to see the defendant when he got arrested? Yeah. Um, was he asked about where Olisa was at that time? Yeah. When he got out of jail, would he tell you where Olisa was? No. Did you ask? Yeah. Did you actually speak to him the day that he was he was uh, let out of jail, April 30th, 1982? Okay. They brought it back in court. And they did one there. In the state of Ohio, at that time, did you go to court and get sold by her in custody of Olisa? I did. Did you also get a personal protection order against Mr. Williams at that time? Yeah. Yeah. May I approach? You may. Thank you. Denise, I'm going to show you seven pages that's been marked as people's proposed exhibit 25. Do you recognize those documents as it relates to what we're talking about with the PPO, the personal protection order? Okay. What is that? This is the. You can go through all the pages. For the record, Matt, there are seven pages to this document. Okay. Thank you. What, when were you ordered? Does the, the document reflect when you were ordered temporary custody? That's the judgment indicating that you, at that time, the court in Ohio was giving you sole custody of Olisa. Right. Was Olisa in your custody or did you have her at that time? No. Your Honor, I'd ask that people's 25 be admitted. Objection or voir dire? No objection for exam purposes only. Exhibit 25 is admitted. Did you know at that time in May, at the time you were granted sole custody of Olisa, whether or not Isaiah was in the state of Ohio or somewhere else? Were you trying to contact him? Yeah. Okay. Were you having any luck connecting with him or having any conversations with him at that time? No. Before we go over the next few weeks and months of time, Tell me about Elisa as a baby. Was she physically healthy? Did she have any underlying health conditions that you knew about at that time? Any underlying medical conditions um, that would make her ill or anything like that that you knew about? Was she up to date on her immunizations, her, her shots that she should have had at that age? Well, um, so, yeah, so that time. Was she being breastfed at that time still? But you were the sole primary caregiver, I think you testified, correct? So you were the one to, to care for her and feed her, correct? Yeah. Your Honor, may I approach? Yes, you may. Denise, people's proposed eight. Do you recognize what that is? Yeah. What is that? And that's from the clinic in, is that in Ohio? Right. Okay, and does that reflect her immunization card that you recall as far as what she was up to date to? Um, Your Honor, I would ask that people that be admitted. No objection for exam purposes on Exhibit A is admitted. The next few weeks that go by, between April 29th, I should say June of 1982, are you still in the 
state of Ohio at this time. I had to, um, did you come back to Michigan in June? Uh, I think it was around June. Okay. At that time, did you know where Elisa was? I assume that she was with him in Michigan. But you had at that time you did you had I had you seen her? No, I had not seen her. When you were still in Ohio before you came back to Michigan, did you make any efforts to try to put out the information to the public to try to find her? Yeah, I put it at the newspaper. Okay. Um, did you also put a missing poster uh, together? Yeah. Did you do that in Michigan or did you do that in Ohio? Your Honor, may I approach? You may. Denise, do you recognize what exhibit proposed exhibit four is a copy of? Yeah. What is that? The pan that was the paper if anyone knows more about the Okay. Was that the Cincinnati Inquirer at the time, or was it a different local paper? Okay. What was your purpose in putting out this information? If anyone that may know in or no Your Honor, I'd ask that people's four be admitted. Objection of voir dire. No objection for exam purposes only. Exhibit four is admitted. People's, I should say, I'm six and seven. They're the same things, they're just different organizations. Denise, people's proposed exhibit five. Is this the missing poster um, of a Lisa that you put together yourself? Yes. Okay. And uh, you put that together in the state of Michigan? Yes. Okay. What was the purpose behind doing that? I had um, joined that with the um, missing, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. And uh, that was one thing that had to give me to a folks driver. Sergeant Canada was the officer in charge of the case back, back in 1982 from the Ann Arbor Police Department, correct? Okay. So the missing poster indicated information on who should be contacted if someone saw Holmes, correct? Correct. People six and seven were these also missing posters that were done by other organizations? Correct. Did you provide that picture of Olisa to these organizations? Your Honor, I'd ask that five, six, and seven all be admitted. Objection of what here? No objection for exam purposes. Five, six, and seven are admitted. Did you also, um, Denise, contact multiple? I know you already said that you were uh, involved with the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. How, how were you involved? What did you actually do to get Elisa's information out there to try to find her? I had contact with them. And also um, other agencies as well. Child Find Incorporated. Child Find, you said Incorporated? Yeah. Um, did you write letters to news organizations? I wrote letters to news organizations. And, um, to Carmen Harvin, who was doing really missing children of Michigan, and she was connected with child find. Did you write letters also to um, Domino Pizza? I did. Tell me what the purpose behind that was. Um, I believe at that time they were putting photos of missing children on the carpet. In terms of your communications with the mission, uh, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, um, did you provide uh, Lisa's picture and information to them so they could distribute it to yeah. corporations and news organizations all over the country? Okay. Um, did you have a, a stack of letters from them to and from them that you provided to Detective Dan Iverson? Right. Thank you. That'd be a letter. Do you, do you have correspondence from them that dates from about 1985 through 2014. Again, were your efforts, these were all efforts to getting Alyssa's information out there to find her one way or another? Right. 
You also provided your DNA to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, correct? Yes. What was the point of that? Do you remember? That was to, uh, I think it was maintenance. I think it was they, um, whenever they uh, have a, uh, in case I get, you know, a child was blind or deceased or alive, they can find out who they are through DNA. Did you also contact the Adam Walsh Resource Center at that time? Yes. And this is another organization you provided Elisa's picture and personal information to. Yes, I had several agents. At that time, did you have any idea where she was? No. Your Honor, I have a stack of exhibits at this time. I don't know if I can just have counsel go through them and then we can see if there okay. is a stipulation to them for exam purposes. And this is just her impression photo. This is her letters to the news organization to get at least some information out there. This is her letter to the YWCA. That's one page here. Governor, I think there is a stipulation for exam purposes only, and I'll, I'll read through what, what these okay. exhibits are. Um, exhibit 15 is, excuse me, exhibit 14 is a letter uh, registering Denise with Child Fine Incorporated. People's Exhibit, and that's a four, that's a two-page document. People's Exhibit 15 is a letter from Denise to Child Find of America Incorporated. People's Exhibit 13 is a letter um, from the YWCA um, regarding Miss um, Williams at that time, and Fraser, Fraser Daniel now, and her daughter Elisa being residents of the shelter that time in Ohio. Um, People's Exhibit 12, which is 16 pages, is what Ms. Uh, Fraser Daniel testified to her multiple letters to news organizations at that time. People's Exhibit 11 is a two-page document. They are age progression photos of Olisa Williams um, from the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Um, there's two different ones. People's Exhibit 17 is a 68-page document. Your Honor, those are the letters from the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children from 1985 to 2014. Um, People's Exhibit 16 is a six-page document. The letters to and from Domino Pizza, Mr. Tom Monahan. Again, uh, Ms. Fraser Daniel testified to that as well. Uh, People's Exhibit 18 is a five-page document. Uh, notifying that Ms. Fraser Daniel has provided her DNA um, to be tested against a database for missing children from the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Excuse me, Council. I just want to make sure the 68 page document is exhibit. That is exhibit 17, Judge. Sorry, 17. I'm a little order on it. It's okay. And then six, the six page document that followed that was exhibit. The six page do document to Domino Pizza yes. is 16. That's 16, 16. Okay. and then the National Center, the 68-page document is 17. Thank you. The DNA document is 18. That's five pages. People's Exhibit 19 is, uh, again, a letter to a news organization on a Western Union mailgram. And then People's 20 is the letter um, to Ms. Williams from the Adam Walsh Resource Center. I'd ask at this time all those be uh, admitted with the stipulation only for exam purposes. Stipulation, Your Honor. All right. Exhibits, looks like it's 11 through 20. Yes. Um, will be admitted. Thank you, Judge. Denise, at some point, um, Dr. Hunter's going to say you, you come back to Michigan and find Elisa. Yeah. Yeah, I think you already testified, you believe that was around June of 1982, correct? Did you retain an attorney at that time? Yeah. Who was your attorney at that time? Follow me. What was your point in giving yourself an attorney then? Uh, and, to get and did you do that through your attorney file all those documents in the in the Washtenaw County Family Court? Yes. And were those documents, did those begin to be filed in June and July of 1982? If you remember? Yes. Did you also get a restraining order? Yes. One of the other things, uh, 
Ms. Ms. Fraser Daniel, that I know you you we talked about. Did you write a letter to the U.S. Department of State? Yes. What was the purpose behind uh, contacting the U.S. Department of State? So, um, so you tried to stop uh, Elisa's social security number from being used to get a passport, correct? Were you successful in doing that and contacting the U.S. Department of State? Yeah. Okay. Um, and you provided them some information? and they were able to at least take that information to stop her from getting a passport. And did you also sign a waiver of uh, attorney client Ms. Reno so that she could speak to both the news and to speak to Detective Dan Iverson? Yes. Okay. Two waivers Two different waivers. This is just to the U.S. Department of State. Yeah. Your Honor, I believe there's a stipulation to offer admission just for exam purposes only. If that's correct, Your Honor. Those exhibit numbers are again? That is 21 and 22. 21, Your Honor, is a four page document yes. from the U.S. Department of State regarding Melissa to not have a passport. 22 is a two page document. Those are two waivers of attorney client privilege. That's yeah, true. 21 and 22 are admitted. When you came back to Michigan, you talked to Isaiah Williams by phone. Did you ever talk to him in person, um, outside of court, or did you always talk to him in, uh, by phone? By phone. Did you ask him, where is Melissa? Yeah. What did he tell you? He always gave me different stories each time. He was saying, if I got 5,000, I could get her. He said that she was across the water. What does that mean? She's across the water. I don't know. Yeah. You said he told you if you had five thousand dollars, you could get her back. Yeah. Um, did he also tell you that she she had died? He said that that died from a high fever or something like that. Did you subsequently call any of the local hospitals? I saw hospitals, even Barrow and Banting. All over. We were ever, ever able to confirm that Elisa had died of some medical condition. Then. Did Isaiah ever tell you in any of these phone calls or any of your conversations with him when you came back to Michigan that he killed her? How many times did he tell you that? Did he tell you how he killed her? But he told you that more than once. Back when he told you that, at that time, did you believe that? Tell us why. No, I just thought that she was still here. She was still here. Since then, since Mr. Williams has been charged, in, in 2021, have you gone forth with proceedings to obtain a death certificate for Lisa? Yeah. And tell us about that. Tell us why. Tell us why you, I don't want to say waited, but why you waited to, to do that for four and 40 years. when I heard that she was no longer here. This was the wonder of I. Is it difficult to do that, to, to move forward with proceedings like that, like taking that certificate? Yeah. To, now we're in the timeline of September. He told you these multiple different stories, correct? About September 2nd, 1982, did you go to a funeral? Yeah. Whose funeral? Whose mom's? Tell us about that. I've been hoping that I 
Did you see Olisa there? Did you see Isaiah there? Yeah. Did you notify the police at that time that Isaiah would be there? Um, and that they should go there? Okay. You know, anyway. A couple of weeks after that, did Isaiah contact you uh, about Lisa? Yes. Yeah. Okay. What happened? Tell us about that. Do you remember what date that was? If I was to show you a police report, would that help refresh your recollection of the date? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm not yes, you may. <laughs> Anticipate. Please, I'm showing you a copy of the City of Inkster Police Department incident report. Um, does that look familiar to you? Yeah. Okay, um, is there a date reflected on that report? Does that refresh your memory as to this incident we are, we're talking about now? The incident with Inkster Police Department, did you go meet Isaiah in the city of Inkster regarding Olisa? Yeah. Why did you go to Inkster? What did he tell you? He said, I met him that I was. And did you meet him at a motel, a Mona Lisa motel? Yes. Okay. Tell us what happened when you got there. Oh, well, it happened. Well, Lisa was not there? No. Okay. Was Isaiah there, though? There. Okay. So tell us what, what happened after that. Uh, he was the that I was having an with his brother. Which was totally untrue. And he started uh, meeting me. And this time it was really worse. It was bad. Why was it really worse? Why was it bad? My face was all moved up and uh, my eyes were all bloody. And um, he told me to go into the bathroom and clean up. And I went in the bathroom and closed the door and then I jumped out the window. Yeah. What floor were you on? Did you contact the police? Uh, the manager did. And was Isaiah Williams ultimately arrested? Was he arrested? Uh, I don't think he was. I mean, he was gone. He was going to the hotel when the police got there. Say yes. Yeah. Eventually, was he arrested though? Yeah. Okay. Did you go to court for that? Yeah. At that time, are you able to talk to Isaiah and ask him any further information about Lisa or where she's at? Does he tell you any additional information? No. Let's talk about the Washtenaw County Family Court proceedings. Um, you've already testified that Molly Reno, your attorney, filed the documents on your behalf in June and July, correct? Did she file for divorce for you? What about child uh, custody for you to have custody of yeah. In about February of 1983, February 1st, 1983, do you remember court proceedings where Isaiah testified? Yeah. Was he ordered at that time by the court to bring Lisa forward to produce her to bring her to court? To bring her forward. Do you remember that? Okay. But in the hearing in February of 1983, did Isaiah talk about in court about ultimately where Lisa was? He claimed that she was he was at Iron Park, passed out in his car or whatever, and when he came to, she was gone. Is Island Park in the city of Ann Arbor? Yeah. And that's in Washington, honey, correct? 
Do you know if there's a body of water that, that goes through Island Park? Yeah. So Mr. Williams in court claimed that he was passed out in his vehicle. Am I hearing that? And that when he awoke, Olisa was gone, correct? Correct. What about Olisa's belongings? Did he ever indicate her belongings were still in the car? He didn't. Did Mr. Williams say whether he reported this, this you know, mysterious disappearance of Olisa to the police? No. And I should have asked that better. That was a terrible question. Um, when you say no, does that mean he did not report it or he didn't say it? He didn't report it. Was Mr. Williams ultimately arrested in court and held in contempt of court? Did you go to see him during that period of time in the jail to try to ask where Olisa was? Yeah. And what did he tell you, if anything? Nothing. Would he even answer you at that time? He wouldn't talk about it. Um, the divorce was finalized June 2nd, 1983. Sound correct to you? Um, who had custody of Elisa at that time? Who was granted custody of her? By that point, we're talking June of 1983. Um, you had not seen her for a year, correct? When Mr. Williams uh, was released from jail for those contempt proceedings. Would he, would he call you? Call and, you know, after me. What does that mean? And either he will call and say that, you know, I asked him about Elise and he will always say different stories. And again, are, these, are any of these the same stories he told you before that you testified to? Any of them ever different? Any different versions of the events that he ever told you in those calls? When he was released from jail, did he ever tell you again that he killed her? Did he tell you that before he went to jail? Denise, do you know of any close family members of Isaiah that live in Alabama? You have no knowledge of any of these people, no. if they exist, correct? Let me ask this. Um, when you contacted the police here in Michigan, you went to the Ann Arbor Police Department, correct? Yeah. What made you go to Ann Arbor? Yeah, okay. Right. Um, had Isaiah also um, at that time told you about Island Park? Yeah. Okay. And did you know at that time Island Park was a park that was in the city limits of Ann Arbor? Yeah. Okay. Um, did that also play into your decision to go to Ann Arbor Police Department? Or had you gone to them already? I think that. Okay. Is that where your parents lived at the time, Ann Arbor? Do you know if um, Mr. Williams was also, when he came back to Michigan, residing in different locations within Washington? Uh, okay. I don't have any further questions. Thank you. Cross examination. Thank you. Did you need a break, ma'am? Ma'am, are you good? Okay. Good afternoon. Um, you stated that over the years when you would talk to Mr. Williams about Elisa, he gave you multiple answers, correct? And you didn't believe any of them, correct? You thought he was just hiding her from you? I, 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 okay. And you stated that you also um, submitted your DNA to one of the missing and exploited children databanks in case a DNA hit happened when they recovered a missing child or a deceased child or something like that, correct? Yeah. 
you never got any DNA hits, correct? And if you're not aware of exactly who his relatives are in Alabama, I've never heard of him in Okay, so you don't know if he has relatives there or not. You just aren't sure. Okay, and you've never investigated that, correct? Okay, no further questions. All right, any reader? Just briefly. Yeah. When you said you didn't believe any of his stories, um, is it because he told you so many different stories? Yes. At that time, um, we're talking about 1982 and 1983 when he's making these statements. Is that fair? Yes. And so we're talking about six months to a year after Olisa disappeared, correct? Yeah. It's now been 41 years since you've seen your daughter, correct? What do you believe happened to your daughter? What is his mom? Um, in terms of giving your DNA, um, back earlier in the investigation, you did have to um, serve some remains of a baby in New York. Do you remember that? Yeah. Was that Elisa? No. In terms of your DNA that you've been given um, to other people who have come forward um, saying they, they might be Elisa, has any of that ever produced Elisa? I have no further questions. You're good. Is it fair to say that Mr. Williams terrorized you for the time of period that you've known him, correct? He didn't, you never witnessed him terrorizing Elisa though, correct? Not, not probably, no. Okay, no further questions. Right. Yeah. Ma'am, you may step down. Thank you. If he had done what I needed to do, but. Um, well, I do, and I don't know if the folks in the courtroom are hungry or want to take lunch. Um, I excuse most of them and have them come back at one anyway, so most of my witnesses have taken Oh, okay. Fantastic. But I don't need you guys falling out either. So why don't, I, why don't we do this? Why don't we take about 45 minutes for lunch? I can take care of my business and do that. So we'll come back about a quarter to two, and we'll proceed. All right. Thank you. Court is standing in recess. See that district court for confirmation of the state of Michigan is now back in session. You may be seated. Okay. Uh, is this going to be like Groundhog Day? <laughs> Where? <laughs> Great movie, but don't let it go. Yeah, you know, I did like that Groundhog. Did you see Miss Woodson, sir? Back in my day, I don't know if I'd come back either. Um, can you, can, yeah, can you check and see, Miss Mr. Allen? I saw her parked. You saw her parked? Was she in the, oh, so it was at our parking lot. Okay, good, good. <laughs> Don't bring him out until she's there. Until she's sitting. Or, she's or sitting at least in the room. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now we can.
Does call the case of the people state of Michigan versus Isaiah Williams. Council, state your appearances, please. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Danny and Woodson on behalf of Mr. Williams, who is seated at the fence table to my right. All right, very good. Um, before we call the next witness, um, during what I'll call Mr. Williams' episode with the paper bag, Exhibit 9, there was no response. I think I heard the prosecutor ask. To have it admitted, did not hear a response from you because of what was going on. For exam purposes only, Your Honor, no objection. So for the record, Exhibit 9 is admitted. Thank you, Judge. That was the first All right. Let me call your next witness. People call Mary Leslie Bryant. All right. Thank you, see, raise your right hand. You solemnly swear or affirm the testimony of God here. The truth of you got. Go ahead and have a seat. State your first and last name and spell it for the record. Uh, Mary Leslie Bryant, M A R Y L E S L I E. I think you know what A U T. All right, you may be seated, ma'am. Thank you. Um, before you inquire, Miss Bryant. Are you from Ann Arbor? Are you from Ann Arbor? No. Okay. All right. Then it's not who I'm thinking it is. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Judge. Uh, Ma'am, may I call you Mary? Yes. Okay. Mary, do you know someone by the name of Isaiah Williams? How do you know Isaiah Williams? Okay. He was someone you dated, your boyfriend? Okay. Do you see Mr. Williams in the courtroom? Your Honor, let the record reflect that Ms. Leslie Bryant has identified the defendant, Isaiah Williams. Without objection, record shall so reflect. Um, Mary, Ms. Leslie Bryant, have you been interviewed about this case a couple different times by the Ann Arbor Police Department? Yes. Okay. Um, does 2011 and 2017 sound about right to you as to when you were interviewed? Okay. Um, I'm going to bring you back to the fall of 1994. Tell us how you met the defendant, Isaiah Williams. In a temporary place that a lot of people going to work. I've been down there. And were you coworkers at that time? And then become co workers because whoever gets there first gets the job. Okay. But then after that, all will do the same thing. Well, job site. So we all, a group of us to stay together. At some point, do you begin dating Mr. Williams? Yeah. Okay. Tell me about how the relationship starts off. Is it good? It was good. He um, told me that he was a paralegal. Told me that he was um, looking for a full-time job. And after that, we went out a couple of times. And it was, it was all right. At some point, did it change? It changed after I went to my daughter Daniel's house because she had a barbecue. And he accused me of 
my oldest son, which he didn't believe that was my son. He he got very angry and upset and said, let's go. He took me by the arm and said, that's it. So we went. And did it escalate from there in the relationship? Did things get worse? Oh, beat the hell out of me, get worse, you know, I got worse. I, th- I think I would, Miss Leslie Bryant. Okay, so can you tell me about what beating the hell out of you looked like? Can you tell us what that means? One time he took and pulled my hair out and he just, I took my clothes and dragged me down the steps and left me in the hallway. And then he just came down with that. Took me by the arm and dragged me right back up there and just started beating me again. How many times do you think this happened? Four or five times. Did he ever give you any any pills or anything like that? He gave me uh, drinks. And it made me feel like I couldn't move and I couldn't say anything, but he did what he wanted to me. What does that mean? Beat me on the bed, strip me, put his hand and stuff inside me. He just did his thing. Could you, after taking this drink that he gave you, could you could you stop him? No. You, so you already said you couldn't move, correct? Is that a, is that yes? Yeah. Okay. During one particular uh, physical assault, um, do you recall him strangling you? Do you recall him telling you some statements that bring you here to court? Yeah. Tell us about what you remember Isaiah Williams telling you while he was strangling you. He got mad about something and he started choking me. And he was like, I was going in and out. And he said, Don't you know I killed a woman? Don't you know I killed a baby? I'll kill you. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't breathe. He just kept on choking me. Oh, I woke up. He was just sitting in his chair over here. And he acted just like nothing happened. These statements that he made to you about, I killed a woman, I killed a baby. Did he make that to you one time during an assault? Or did he ever say that to you again during an assault? Um, did he specifically say he killed a baby? Did he say what he did with the baby's body? No. Uh, he used, I'll, I'll beat you up. I'll kill you as a way of keeping me from getting out of here. I did not want him to hurt my grandkids. I did not want to hurt my other, my my children, so I stayed away. You said he he threatened to kill you after he made these statements, correct? Um, based on those threats, did you initially tell anybody about these statements he made? When the police came to you, did you tell them? No. Okay. <laughs> and eventually, did you tell them? Yeah. Okay. Found, found out they, they came to talk to you. Were you worried about talking to the police? No, because I thought after all this time, yeah, gone on about his business just like he didn't do anything. The police didn't go to and here to get him. They wouldn't have come to Cincinnati and get him. It was like they were just letting him do what he wanted to do. And it went on for so long. I just said, well. Forget it. And that At the time he made these statements to you about I, I killed a baby, did you know he had a baby that disappeared? I did. 
to even know that he had children to um to also end our relationship. Okay. Because it was Easter time and I got baskets for all my grandkids. And he was upset because I got them something. And I didn't get his grandkids nothing. And I got only what grandkids. So at the time he made these statements about this baby, did it even register that he had a baby for you to be even really concerned about? No. Okay. I didn't believe it. I thought it was in just another way to make sure that I stay crazy in my life. That's how I feel about it. That you were feeling crazy about the situation. Okay. You mentioned Easter time. <laughs> the statements that he made while he was assaulting you, uh, did it happen around Easter time? Okay. About how much time passed before he was assaulting you again and making these statements about the baby? Much. How long did you and Mr. Williams date? Until the final time he took it on. He, he was beating me. And I, because I wouldn't cry, he had this remote control and he was beating me on my right foot. And I would I just said, let him go and do it. And then he started hit and started really hurting. So then he tried to pull me and I got the bottom of the bed to try to get him off of me. But then it, he just drug me across the room. He threw the bedroom and right there. Then he just got up and went in there and sat there looking at me. I went out, got ready to get up. This scar right here was on my head. That's the scar on my face. And that was it. Was that the final, the final straw? You said that was it. Was that the last assault that you recall? Yeah. Mary, was that approximately September? Excuse me. I'm going to show you some pictures. Was that approximately May of 1997, if you remember? Approximately. Awesome. Did you go to the hospital for your injuries? Yes. Okay. Um, did you actually file a police report? Yes. Did you have to go to court for this? Yes. Did you also get a personal protection order against Mr. Williams at that time? Okay. Your Honor, may I approach? You may. Mary, I'm going to first show you people's exhibit 60 through 60. Seven. Can you tell me if you recognize those pictures? Yeah. Who's that in Exhibit 60? Okay, is that a picture? Of, do you have any injuries in that picture? Scar in the middle of your forehead and in your nose? People's Exhibit 61, is that a, a bruise on your arm? People's Exhibit 62, what's that? Or Is that from the assault that you're, you've been talking about with Isaiah? Yeah. And from the hospital visit that we've been talking about? People 64, what is that? Is that from the same assault we're talking about? Here it looks like in people 64, 65, 66, Looks like the, the back of these Polaroid photos of your injuries. Is that the hospital information? Okay. Is that where these pictures were taken of you of these injuries that we're talking about today? Okay. People 67. That looks like a card for a medical appointment. Do you remember what that was for? I was supposed to go back in. Because he had sodomized me so much. And I wasn't having a meeting. I was supposed to make an appointment to go here. And I said I wasn't going outside because they couldn't make him, they couldn't find him, they couldn't get with him. So I just stayed home. I went to the clinic and talked to these people up there. So, then, so you said because you were afraid to go out and see him, you actually missed a follow-up appointment for being sodomized by him, correct? Did this happen during this final assault that we're talking about? 
No, because that was way. Okay. People 69 are these Franciscan Health System of Cincinnati. Do you know where, where that was at? No, it's the hospital. Okay. Is that the hospital you went to for your medical treatment that we've been talking about for these injuries? Yeah. Okay. And they've got your, your name and your information in them. Mary, you indicated that you've got a personal protection order after this assault against Mr. Williams. Giving you what's been marked, people 68, five pages. Do these documents look familiar to you? Did you have to fill these out? Yeah. Is that the paperwork you had to fill out to get your personal protection order? Was that granted, Mary? Did you actually get the order from the court? Oh, okay. Eventually, you did get a personal protection order against it, correct? Yeah. Was that in the city of Cincinnati in Ohio? Yeah, it was the last time I was supposed to go to court. And we got sit in here and they caught everybody that came. And I was supposed to sit in here. And when he came, he said he didn't bother to come to court. So that's when they told me, go back to the shelter and stay in there. And I didn't let me know when they catch him. They never did catch him. They never caught him. No. You had a personal protection order on you for about 20 years, is that right? Okay. Your Honor, I'm going to ask that people 60 through 69 be admitted. Any objection or water? Uh, no objection for exam purposes only, Your Honor. Exhibit 60 through 69 are admitted. Mary, you said that when the police came to you first, I think you told them Isaiah made a statement to you about killing a woman, but you didn't mention the baby part. Do you remember that? Was there some concern with why you didn't mention it was a baby until the second time they came and saw you? Do you remember why you felt more comfortable the second time? Tell me about that. You said he made these statements, your grandbabies, your grandbabies. What would he tell you he was going to do to your grandbabies? Sometimes he'd be choking me. It's like he's going to another little world and all of his own. He accused me of working for the FBI one time. And I kept telling him I did. And he said, you want me, you want me to hurt your grandbabies, don't you? Don't you? And he just kept talking to me. I said, no, I don't work for the FBI. I never worked for the FBI. And it didn't matter. So I just waited until he got to with his little stuff. And I like, what do you want to do? There wasn't any time to get me. There wasn't anybody to help me. So I just had to buy my time and help myself. That's These statements that you say that Isaiah made about killing a baby um, and killing a woman, um, other than the police, did you tell anybody else about these statements that Isaiah had made to you? No, you know how, you know, you would know. When somebody tells you over and over again that this is what happened and this is what happened, but then you remember he's telling you. So maybe he's just saying the scary words. You don't believe it. I don't believe it until they came to show me a picture of a little baby. And at the time these statements were made, you didn't know there was a baby named Olisa Williams that had been missing, correct? Okay. Um, when was the last time you saw Isaiah Williams before you're, you're seeing him here in court today? How long's it been? He showed up in court. And they told him that he had to go down, go to jail. Uh, gave, him, gave him my next court appointed time in front of the court. And he did, he still, he didn't come. That was in 1997, correct? Yeah. And has it been that long since you've had to see him since 1997? Yeah. Okay. Did Isaiah Williams ever tell you that? He had a close head injury that caused him to have amnesia or have lack of memory in the years that you knew him. He said, he 
Don't say nothing. Just don't. Because if, if you tell him the truth, you tell him the truth. If he's not, he's not. That's not going to be another point for him to whip my ass. Excuse me. No, it's okay, man. Yeah. You got a right to say what you want. So there's no reason, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. No reason for you to confront him and risk getting hurt. No. Okay. Um, did he ever say that after this car wreck, he didn't know who he was or didn't have any memory of anyone in his life? Did he ever tell you anything like that? Okay. One moment, Your Honor. Yes. No further questions. Thank you, Mary. Okay. Oh, hold on just one moment. Cross examination. One You might want to remember your microphone. Um, yeah, it goes green if you're not being picked up, but go ahead. Good afternoon. Um, you said that when Mr. Williams made threats about killing people, it was during the course of time that he was beating you, correct? And he didn't make those threats or those statements outside of that, right? And that's why you thought he was just saying them to scare you, correct? And outside of his interaction with you, did you see him be violent or abusive towards any children, like your grandchildren or anything like that? I didn't see anything else that I was mostly for a while. I was in the apartment. I couldn't go nowhere. I was right there in the apartment. So it's fair to say the only person you saw him be violent with was you, correct? And you said that he would repeatedly tell you that he had killed a woman and that he had also beaten another woman with a group of kids and left that woman for dead. Or was a preacher's daughter? I'm sorry. So you said that he raped and sodomized you, correct? And he told you that he had raped and sodomized a young woman, correct? Okay. And he told you that he had killed another woman, correct? but he never killed you, correct? Okay, no further questions. Very briefly. Yes. Mary, did you ever leave your grandchildren alone with this man? Did he ever watch them or babysit them or, or have them in his care and custody? No, because I made sure. I went over there. Dion, and the kids would be upstairs. I would be outside the house. The only time I went over there and he came over there was when he pulled my hair out of my head and that neck of me, and that was the only time. So he never was alone with those grandbabies, correct? Okay. And when you were asked about the statement that he made about gang raping a, a preacher's daughter, he had sexually assaulted you before. You said he sodomized you, correct? Did, so you had no reason to doubt that particular story since he had treated you that way, correct? Okay. Thank you, Mary. Anything else? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Ms. Brown, thank you very much. You all right? Brian, you take your time. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, ma'am.
Brian, you just take your time. I got I got all day. You take your time and get there, okay? Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Call your next witness. People call Elizabeth Reese to the stand. I think they're coming in. All right. There you go. Hello, Miss Reese. Miss Reese, will it be easier for you either to be in the chair or you want to sit on your. Sit You'll sit now. Okay. All right. Very good. Where you sit down, you raise your right hand. You solemnly swear upon the testimony you're about to give will be the truth. So, who's going to be high? We're going to have a seat. State your first and last name and spell it for the record. And then you got you. You got it. He's better than me. So we're good. Okay. Okay. You ain't quiet. Thank you, Josh. Miss Reese. Good afternoon. The uh, case that brings you here to court, is it fair to say you've been interviewed by Ann Arbor Police many times? Many, many times. Uh, if I tell you you were interviewed in 83, twice in 2011, once in 2014, and once in 2015, would you have any reason to dispute that? How do you know somebody by the name of Isaiah Williams? Okay. How long were you married to him? About 11 years. Okay. Do you have any children with Mr. Williams? I have three. Okay. What are their names? Verna Williams, Kimberly, and Scott. Does he go by Scotty? Scotty. Do you see Mr. Williams in the courtroom today? Yes. Okay. Can you point him out and describe what he's wearing or what, what identifies him? He's over here. Um, he has a t shirt and a mask. Your Honor, let the record reflect that Ms. Reese is identified to defend. That objection shall so reflect. Ms. Reese, is it fair to say that back in 1983, your memory was probably the freshest and the, the best that it was back then? Yes. Were you honest and truthful with the police back in 1983? Yes. Since 1983, have you had any injuries that have caused you to have significant memory loss? Yes, I've had two strokes. And uh, being Islamic. Yes. Okay. Um, were you also physically assaulted in 1984? Yes. Who physically assaulted you? I agree with you. Okay. And in that assault, which we will talk about, did that cause you any sort of head injury or memory loss? Yes. Okay. Um, so as we go through the dates, I'm going to try to refresh your memory. If there's things you don't remember, just tell me you don't remember. Okay. okay. Is it fair to say you were married from the defendant from 1966 to 1976 and divorced in 77? Yes. Okay. Tell me about your marriage, your relationship with Isaiah. Uh, probably uh, the first year maybe probably was pretty good. Uh, the second year he started to physically assault me. We just and go ahead. on a regular, regular, regular basis. When you say he physically assaulted you, can you tell us some of the things that he did to you? He slap, knock, kick, whatever. Yeah. Did he ever physically assault you when you were pregnant with any of your children? Yes. Okay. Which children? Kimberly's. When you say he assaulted you, what did he do to you when you were pregnant with Kimberly? Uh, he threw me on or he, uh, he kicked me in my stomach. When you separated in 90, 1976, tell me how it causes you to, to go to separate. Um, 
Well, off and on, he was in Stockton, and then in in uh, seventy six, I said it. That enough was just enough for me. And when you left, you moved away from him. Did he still continue to contact you? Yes. Okay. Did he ever continue to assault you? Times that you separated and were preparing to do. Yes. Can you tell me about a time you remember that, that happening? Um, I had left him, and I remember one time he saw me get, and my mother came to me, and I went to her house, and we saw him there at her house. And uh, he, uh, my, all my children were there at the time. Uh, and every and my sister, my sister and my brothers were here too. They were afraid. And my mother finally, I'm not sure what year that was, but she came to the to the door and she told him, she said, Well, if you come in now, you know, I'll do that. This axe, she put axe to the door. And so he knew he said, I remember the words he said, he said, You are a crazy woman. And she she left. She was like, any of these uh, physical assaults, separated persons, physical assault fights, were they ever over child support or him having to pay child support? I don't remember fight necessarily, but uh, I remember he did tell the judge that he wasn't going to pay child support. That he would pay, that the judge could not tell him what to pay the children, that he would pay what he wanted to. In 19... You've actually gotten a personal protection order on him um, since that 1984 assault, correct? Yes. We'll actually handle that. Um, your daughter, Kimberly, yes. and back in the 1960s when she was about two, maybe three years old, did something happen to Kimberly? Yes. What happened to Kimberly? Uh, I was at work. I came home, and uh, Kimberly was acting a little strange, a little lonely. So I asked her what would happen to him. And I, you know, tried to find out in little child's words. And she really didn't couldn't tell me what happened. I asked her older sister what had happened. She she was a little older than her, so but she couldn't tell me either what had happened. Let but, me ask this. Um, at the time, Kimberly's home is your mm -hmm. older daughter Verna? Yes. Who was who was there with the children when something happened to Kimberly? Who was watching? The dad, Isaiah. Okay, all right. So when the kids don't tell you what happened, what happens next? Um, I then um, Kimberly was uh, just kind of really really sore and to the touch almost, and so she uh, finally uh, I called his mother and she came over. Uh, and we took her to the hospital. Did Kimberly have any injuries? She had, I believe, I know it was one broken leg, I think it was two, and a broken arm, or two broken arms in the leg. I know it was one broken leg. With these broken bones, did you ask Isaiah what happened to Kimberly? Yes, I did. At that time, what did he tell you? He said that um, she had... Um, she had fell into the bushes that were in our yard. Did CPS become involved? Yes, they did. Okay. Did, did Kimberly actually leave the home for a brief period of time? Yes, she did. For about how long? Probably two weeks or three at the most. Was Kimberly in a cast? Yes, she was. At that time, do you remember if Isaiah was interviewed by, by CPS as to what happened? Yes, he was. Okay, do you know what he told them? He told them the same thing that he had told me. The fast forward, um, maybe 1972 or 73, do you remember Mr. Williams sending you a letter asking you to come see him in, in prison? Yes, he was in prison on a uh, narcotics charge. And my mother and his mother were uh, asked to come to the prison to see him. Did all three of you go and, and see him? Yes, we did. You were still married to him at the time, correct? Right? Yes, okay. yes, I was. So when you came to see him, did you, what if anything did he tell you? Uh, he said he wanted to talk to us. He had 
he, he really just wanted to be honest. He had found, he felt God, and so he really wanted to tell us what had happened. And so he, he told me at that time <laughs> that he had assaulted uh, Kimberly and had thrown her down because she wouldn't stop crying. She would often cry with him, all, mostly all the time. She never connected, she never bonded with him. And she, he tried to get started from crying. She wouldn't stop, so he pushed her down. He threw her down. Excellent. When you, you say he threw her down, did he indicate where, where in the house he had thrown her down? I don't remember where in the house, but on the outside of the house, it was the, uh, it was the back in, instead of the front. In the time that you separated from him until you were your divorce was granted in 1977, did you get some restraining orders, some personal protection orders against Mr. Williams? Yes. Did they ever keep him from contacting you? No. Your divorce was granted. Does July 7th, 1977 sound about right to you? That's correct. Had you ever seen the baby of Lisa Williams? Yes. Did you know Denise, now Denise Frazier, Denise Williams? Yes, I did. Okay. How did you know Denise? I'm not sure how I was thinking about it. I'm not sure how I met her, but um, I had talked to her often. I had warned her about Mr. Williams being such a violent man when I found out he was sick. I think I found out through the visitation of my children with him. And I had told her that, you know, she really didn't need to connect with him because he was a white man. And uh, so that's really how I got to know her. Elizabeth, it's been it's been 41 years. You and I had a chance to talk before this hearing crashed. Yeah, yes. And have you had a chance to review your prior interviews as far as a little bit of the dates and the times? Yes. Does it help you remember the timeline a little bit, um, given that it's been 41 years and we've had some medical issues? Yes, a little. Um, do you recall talking to Detective Iverson and actually Sergeant Canada back in 1983 and, and recalling that it was July of 1982 when you yes. last saw Elisa? Yes. Okay. When we were talking about Elisa, may I approach your honor? You may. This is People's Admitted Exhibit 1. Is this who we're talking about? Yes. Okay. That's the baby that you saw in July of 1982? Yes. Back in 1983, when your memory was fresh before your injuries, uh, do you recall telling them, you, you recalled it being July 9th that Mr. Williams actually brought the baby to your house? Yes. Okay. Now, before that, had you seen Olisa? Yes, I had seen her at the hospital. Tell me what hospital you had seen her at. I think it was University. Um, do you remember about how much time, how was it a long time before he brought her to the house or a short time that you saw it at the house? I think it was a short time that I had seen her at the hospital when I visited his mother. Tell me about that. Why were you at the hospital visiting his mother? They said that his mother was very, very sick and that she may not live. I was very close to her. And so I went to see her many times. Probably four or five times. Yeah. When you went to the hospital, how many times did you go to the hospital? Let me ask that. I'm thinking probably about four or five times. How many times do you think you saw Elisa? At least four. Who was she with? How did she look? She looked fine to me. I mean, she was a pretty baby. She looked healthy to you? Healthy to me. Um, at that time, um, did you, when you first ran into Isaiah with the baby, did you know he had a new baby? No, I didn't. Did you ask him about having the baby? I think first I asked his sister, Geraldine, uh, who's deceased now, I asked her who his baby was. And she said, well, my brother say it, it's his child. And now that, did you ask now Isaiah who yes. the baby is? What yes, is he I did. He said it was his child. Um, at that time, did you 
have any concerns at all about why the baby was with Isaiah and not with Denise? Yes. Tell me about that. Uh, I asked, I remember asking him where was Denise? Uh, she was the mother of the child. Well, where was she? What did he tell you? He said he at that time knew that she was there in the Ann Arbor area. Uh, she wasn't in the hospital, but she, he, he was keeping a baby for her. He said he was keeping a baby for her? Yes. Okay. He didn't tell you that he took the baby from her, did he? No, he did not. So at that time, you had, had no reason to, to know that anything potentially criminal had happened? No. The third time, I, I think I asked him. I was a little curious. Was that I just didn't think the mother would be wouldn't be a doctor without a child. And does this this suspicion cause you to do anything? Uh, it caused me to call her mother. I think I, I'm not sure how I met her mother. But I called over to the Fraser house and told them that I had seen. I said, "Okay, what was the need? I wanted to." Himself said her mother said at that time she did not know um, Denise was not there. Denise was not with her parents in Ann Arbor. No, she was not that time. And Isaiah had told you she was here yeah. in the area. Yes, he had. Did that cause you any concern? Um, I was a little concerned. After you've seen the baby several times at, at the hospital on July 9, how is it that Isaiah brings the baby? Tell us what you remember him. Um, actually, it was, it was getting close to uh, my daughter Bernard's birthday on the 22nd of July. And, uh, so we talked about that a little bit. The very baby seemed a little dirty, which was not like Isaiah for a child or anyone else to be dirty around him. And so, uh, I asked him, I had a, I had a motto uh, in mind. When I asked him about, uh, could we clean up the baby and comb her, comb her hair? And uh, so uh, my, my motive was to call Denise and tell her I had the baby. Or tell the parents after, well, this was after they had found out about Denise had been beat up in uh, Ohio. And they, she, had, she had come. There, and she had gone back to to the Ann Arbor area. So, so you were trying to keep the baby there so you could get the baby back to Denise. Yes, I was. Okay, and you said it was getting close to Verna's birthday on the twenty second, correct? Yes, it was. Was Verna a teenager at the time, around that age? I think she was uh, going to be sixteen. You now you said that you noticed she was dirty. Did you notice anything about her clothes? Uh, her clothes were not clean. So you and your girls clean her up. And did you actually take this picture of her? My daughter Kimberly did. Okay. And this was when she was at your house, yes. July 9th, 1982? Yes. And just for the record, Your Honor, I was holding up exhibit one. Yes. Did you try to get Isaiah to leave the baby at the house with you? Yes, I did. Did he leave the baby? No, he would not. Did he say why he would not leave the baby with you? He didn't say, he just wouldn't do it. How long did he stay there approximately before he left with the baby? I don't remember how long he stayed. Uh, it was long enough for them to clean her up, put her clothes on her, and comb her hair. Kimberly combed her hair and burned her dress. Um, did you see what kind of car Isaiah left? No, I don't. I don't remember right now. Did he leave with the baby? Just him and the baby? The baby, yes. Did he have any any of the baby's belongings, a car seat, anything like that that you remember? I've never seen a car seat, no. Fast forward a couple of weeks. Um, you mentioned Verna's birthday, July 22nd, correct? Yes. Um, do you remember telling Sergeant Canada you went to Detroit with Isaiah uh, around her birthday, July 22nd? Yes, the 21st. The 21st, the day before. Yes. Do you remember why you and Isaiah went to Detroit? I'm not sure why we went to Detroit, but um, he uh, wanted to 
why we initially went the 21st, the 22nd, I think he wanted to uh, catch a bus. Tell me about that. You said he wanted to catch a bus. Where was where was he catching a bus to? From Detroit. Okay, to where? To Alabama. Did he ask you to take him to the bus station? He did. Okay. And did he tell you why he was going to Alabama? He said to see some relatives. I had known him for many years and didn't, I mean, I knew they probably maybe had some relatives there, but I had never met any relatives from Alabama, all of his brothers and sisters, except for him and his younger sister who were born in Alabama, but I had never met him. So you didn't meet anybody that he was allegedly going to see, correct? No, no, I didn't. He didn't tell you he was who he was going to see. No, he didn't. He, did he have any luggage with him? No, I don't remember. Did he have Olisa with him? No, he did not. Do you remember telling the police that that Isaiah told you he had to get out of town? Yeah, but so, yeah, he did tell me that a couple of times. And again, was this around uh, around Verna's birthday at the end yes. of July? And at that time, was it your understanding that Isaiah lived in, in the state of Ohio? Yes. Okay. But he was going to Alabama. Yes. Did you actually witness him get on the bus and leave? Yes, I did. Did you ask him at that time where Elisa was or who had Elisa when he left at the end of July to go to Alabama? I did ask where the baby was, he said the baby was with uh, her mother. That's Denise? Yes. Have you come to since learn that that, that is not accurate? That's true, yeah. At some point, does Isaiah come back to Michigan? He came back for his mother's funeral. She did die and came back for her funeral. Was that in September of 1982, if you call it? He did not come back, or you did not see him before then? No. Did you have any conversations with him by phone between that time period of end of July and September? I may have had a conversation with him on the phone, but I, I don't remember. Let me ask this. Um, in the time period that Isaiah is gone, did you have conversations with Denise at that point? Yes, I did. Okay. Did you alert, learn that Omisa was missing? Yes, I did. When Isaiah came back, did you ever ask Isaiah where Omisa was? Many times, yes. Tell me about one of the first times you remember asking him and what he told you. Um, he took, I, I, I don't remember exactly when it was. I, he, he told me that, but. He, he said something about she's across the water or something. Did you know what that meant? I did. No. And he didn't explain it. So did you continue to ask him over what happened to Lisa? Each time and every time I saw I said, I asked him. Tell me about other things he would tell you. Um, I remember one time he told me he had met someone um, when he was in prison. Uh, when he was in jail or something, uh, he had met a a couple, a, a man, and a, this the parents of this young man wanted a, a little girl, and so he said he had told me about that. Or, so. Did he ever admit to you that he he had told Denise that he killed Lisa? I don't think he said that right then, but he said that later on. Remember how much later on he told you that? I think he told me that when I learned about um, her at the at the motel in uh, in Inkster or some area that she had to jump out the window. I asked I asked about that then, uh, and that's when he told me that that he had told that he said yes, yes. Did you ever inquire further about him killing her, whether he did that or not? And he said, well, I was just making a joke of it. I really didn't do that. I, you know, I wouldn't do anything like that. But at that point, had you seen Elisa? No. The house that you were living in when you last saw Elisa in July, early July, where was that house? On Oakville Watts in Carlton. What county is that? Um, Wayne County.
let's talk about his mother's funeral. Or oh, actually, before his mother's funeral. In August uh, or September of 1982, was there a time that you found something in your garage yes, that did. didn't belong there? Tell me about that. Um, I found a new shovel in my garage. And so I asked my children about it. My boys are very young at the time. Um, my girls, I asked them about the shovel. And then their cousins come over with the shovel. And they said no. So I called the police department and told them that the shovel had to be in my, in my garage. And I'm not sure how what happened, but at that time, Car Carmen Harlan was working for uh, down four, and she came out and did a story about the shovel and I bet. Tell me what month did you lose? Is this the same month that I say about the baby too? Yes. Yes, it was. Isaiah had access to this house. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And um, at that time, I had a, a boot, I think Fairmont or something like that. Um, I just figured that, first of all, when I got in the car, he asked me for $50. I told him I didn't have $50. I was taking care of his children. How did, how did he react to you not kidding? He got upset. He started to slap me and uh, hit me. I decided that he was, and he got faster and faster in the car. I decided that um, I needed to jump out of this car. But I was like, you know, I, 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 I'm a woman of faith, and I believe in prayer. <laughs> and I prayed, and I said, God, please let this door open. Let me get out of this car. Uh, because I want, I wanted my kids, my girls especially, to know that I at least tried to do what was right and what um, that I felt I needed to jump out of the car. So I opened the door. Um, the door was stuck a little before that because Kim and Vernon, I think Kim and Vernon started driving and she would, they were arguing over who could drive the car out of the drive out of the garage. And uh, so that's the reason why I prayed and asked God to please open the let the door open. Yeah. I opened the door and jumped out of the car. I drive, he was driving the car still. It was still moving when you jumped out? Yes, it was. What happened now? Um, I ran to the closest house I could see. And I was going to the back of the back of the house at the time. There was um, a lot of lumber in the driveway. I wasn't sure at the time about what would happen, what happened, but they were building a garage in the south. Um, so I ran to the to the door, um, the back door. It was a big kind of mansion type house. And uh, so it just so happened that there was a pilot that lived in the house. He was there. He um, was only there because his wife was having a baby. Um, so I, when I was knocking on the door, he didn't hear me because he was on like the second or third floor of this house. So I knocked on the door. And Isaiah um, got in. He was still in the car. He ran the car into the other two or three cars that was parked in the driveway. He crashed it. He crashed into it. So that was made the attention of the man knows of the house. And so he looked out and saw what happened. He in return uh, told the court that he called the police. And when he came to the back door, I was there. Isaiah had got to the back of the door and uh, picked up a board and hit me in the head, my head. Is it one of those boards you were talking about, the lumber? Yes. Building the addition over there? Yes, it was seven seven feet long. Seven feet long. He picked up a seven foot board. Where did he hit you with that board? Well, he first started with my head. I covered my head with my hands like this. And he began to hit me with my hands. I have started to on both of my arms for that. Um, and my hands just went down because it, 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 I heard the crack when it, when it cracked. By that time, the gentleman from the house uh, came outside. And the did he stop him? He asked, he said, please stop. He said, uh, she's leaving. Uh, and Isaiah said to him to go in the house and get some towels. The man in the house came with the tops. He thought he would, you know, of course, try to take care of me himself. Isaiah wanted to do that himself. So did Isaiah start putting the towels on you? He started putting the towels on you. Did the police come to that scene, to that house? It was one, one officer at the time. Did they arrest Mr. Williams? Um, they did. And did Mr. was Mr. Williams charged with assaulting you? Yes, he was. Did he go to prison? Yes, it did. We talked a little bit before that this assault has caused some memory issues for you. Yes. Tell yes. me how it affected you. Um, so affected me more these years. Uh, I was told by my neurologist, please do not call. You have a, a lot of concussions already. Uh, and those concussions came from my 
from the assaults on the assault. And that's one of the reasons why the doctor said I had had strokes. Causing from the injuries from the assault. the injuries, yes. When Mr. Williams got out of prison, did you continue getting a personal protection order to, to keep him away from you? Yes, I think. I, um, Ronna, may I approach? You may. Ms. Reese, is this, this is people's proposed 56. Does this look like the paperwork that, that you had regarding one of your personal protection orders in 1997 and 1990? Looks like 1997. Got it. Yes. Does that accurately reflect the, the paperwork that you had to fill out and that came from the court at the time? Yes. Okay. Your Honor, I'd ask that the uh, people's 56, which is seven pages uh, in okay. length, be admitted into evidence. Any objection? What do you? No objection for exam purposes only, Your Honor. Exhibit 56 is admitted. Ms. Reese, did the defendant ever claim to you that he head injury at any point that caused him to not remember who he was or who you were? He didn't say that to me. I get I got my information after that from I didn't communicate with him. I got that from my daughter. He's never directly sent out to you. Let me ask that. Um did one of your signs pass away? Yes. Is that Deshaun? Yes. Did you call him Sean? Yes. Okay. Um, was there an, a state hearing regarding some, some money for, for Deshaun in 2004 or 2005 time frame? Yes, it was. Did Mr. Williams show up at that hearing? Yes, he did. Did he testify at that hearing? Yes, he did. Did he testify as to being Deshaun's father being entitled to some of that money? He did. You contacted in around 2008 or 2009 to give Isaiah some money. Yes. Okay. Um, were some threats made to you from Isaiah about what would happen if you didn't give him that money? Yes. What did Isaiah tell you? Uh, it was a threat about he was in the building where my grandmother lived at the time. What was your grandmother's name? Oh, uh, my Robinson. Okay. He was in that building. What did he tell you? Uh, well, he told me that she was baking rolls, and I knew she was a baker, and she lived. And he knew exactly where she was at the end of the hall. That's where she lived. Did he tell you something that would happen to her regarding what would happen to her? He said, um, on the phone, you remember what happened. Um, it, it, something could happen to your grandma. And you knew I was very close to her. Um, at that time, did you have a, a granddaughter, Simone? Yes. Okay. And he made a statement to you about Simone is very much with that baby. Do you remember telling him, please? Oh, you were actually meeting. Sustain. I'll let you rephrase. Let me ask this. Um, did you give some information to the police that uh, in 1983? 2011, 2014, and 2015, regarding all of your knowledge on this case. Yes. Okay. Um, did you give the police some information at that time about some threats that, that Mr. Williams had made to you regarding some family members? Yes. You've already talked about um, some threats that right. you've done Fred, correct? Yes. Did he make some threats regarding Simone? I believe so. It was a comparison to from Simone to the baby go through When you say comparison, tell me what you mean by comparison. Um I don't remember him saying um directly that in about the baby, but it was about comparing one to the other. Okay. You don't remember his exact words? No, I don't. Was this around the same time that he'd been asking that on the government and talking about? Yes. Do you have any current relationship with the defendant, Isaiah? No. Have you always cooperated with the police in giving your statements? Yes, I try my best to. Have you always been 
two pulling up front. At that particular time, I was. Yes. Ms. Reese, do you recall approximately how old Kimberly was when she got these injuries, broken leg and broken arm? About two and a half. About two and a half years old? Yes. I don't have any further questions. Thank you, Ms. Reese. Okay, hold on. Cross examination. Yeah, it's got to be L. Yeah, to make sure it's green. Good afternoon. Uh, you said Mr. Williams is an avid hunter. So did he move around to hunt? Like, did he go to different locations to hunt? Yes. Okay. So it wasn't unusual for him to be out of town or on his way out of town? In the area, but not out of state. Right. But it wasn't unusual for him to travel, correct? Okay. And you said that he did have family from Alabama? Okay. And at the time that he was leaving, his mother was sick, correct? She died like two months later, right? Okay. He was close to his mom, right? Yes. Okay. And when you saw Elisa at your house in July, you said that she was dirty and she had on dirty clothes. Um, when you guys washed her up and changed her clothes, you didn't notice any bruises or scars or anything, correct? No. Didn't notice any signs of abuse, did you? No. Okay. And when you initially started hearing rumors about um, Elisa being missing and, uh, and Mr. Williams' possible involvement, you initially didn't think anything of it, correct? When you, guys first heard about it? when you first started hearing rumors and speculation about Elisa being missing and about Mr. Williams possibly having something to do with that, initially, you did not think that he had harmed the child, correct? Initially. Okay. In fact, initially, you thought he was with his sister, Geraldine, Jer or someone like no, not the baby. I thought the baby was with her mother. Okay. But again, you didn't think anything was wrong with the baby, especially not based on your last observations or interactions with the baby and Mr. Williams, correct? Let me phrase it this way. When you, when you saw Mr. Williams with the baby, did the baby seem to be scared of Mr. Williams? No. Okay. Did the baby seem to want to stay with you guys and not go with Mr. Williams when Mr. Williams was leaving? Judge, I'm going to object to how she's going to be able to answer what the infant was seeming to want to do at the time. I think that's uh, Okay, I'll, I'll rephrase. When Mr. Williams was getting ready to leave with the baby, did the baby seem to cling to you guys or did the baby seem to go with Mr. Williams with no problem? When was Mr. Williams with the problem? Okay. And... Although Mr. Williams was coming around during this time, you were still somewhat afraid of him, correct? Because of his past? So it's fair to say you were trying to get him out of your house as quickly as possible, yes? Yeah, yes. Okay, so you weren't trying to walk him out to check out the car or see what was in the car in terms of belongings for him or the baby, correct? No. So when he walked out the door, you just let him go with the baby, right? 
Yeah. Okay, no further questions. Right. Ms. Reese, you said, I noticed when you were asked that last question, you said him, yes, I'm trying to get him out. Yes. You were trying to keep Olisa in, correct? Yes. Why were you trying to keep Olisa in the house without Mr. Williams there? Because I wanted to know by her mother that I had her with him. You wanted her to be with her mother. And you were asked about rumors of Elisa being missing. As far as rumors, you've never seen Elisa again in the last 40 years, have you? No. Okay. And you said you initially did not think he harmed her. What do you think now? I think he did. And you were asked about um, him hunting, and you said he hunted in state, correct? As far as I know, I'm not. State. When you took him to Alabama, he didn't tell you he was going there to, to hunt, correct? No, he did not. Okay. And you talked about him being close to his mom. You you were close to her as well, correct? Yes. And when Isaiah left to go to Alabama at the end of July, was she still sick? Yes. She was dying, correct? Yes. And Isaiah went to Alabama, correct? Yes. I don't have any further questions. Thank you. Good for you. You don't like Mr. Williams, do you? Not that I don't like Mr. Williams. I don't like what he does and what he's done to me. Okay. You don't hold him in high esteem, correct? No, I do not. So if someone told you something negative about him, it's fair to say you would believe it versus not believe it, yes? No, I wouldn't. Okay. Does Mr. Williams strike you as the type of person who stays to deal with difficult stuff, or does he tend to run when things get a little difficult for him? Objection as to speculation. Sustained. Okay. You were married to Mr. Williams for over 10 years, correct? Yes. You had four children with him? Yes. You, even after you guys uh, separated, you still saw him from time to time, even if the interaction was mainly around the children, correct? Yes. During the time that you knew him, is it fair to say that he's the type of person who, when things get difficult, he tends to run if he can't argue or fight his way out of it? Is that fair to say? Yes. Okay. He doesn't handle stress very well, correct? No. And he was stressed about his mother dying, correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. No further questions. I don't have any okay. Ms. Reese, thank you very much. Uh, here. Here. Next witness. Scotty Williams. All right. All right. Please come forward. Is this him? No, please come forward to be sworn. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably. Take a seat. Ready, right? Hand. I swear, burn testimony about the truth, the whole truth, and the truth of so God. See. Say your first and last name and spell it for the record, please. Scotty Williams, S C O T T I D W I T L L I A. All right, thank you, Main Court. Thank you. Uh, may I call you Scotty? Is that the name you go by? Okay. Do you know somebody by the name of Isaiah Williams? Do you see Isaiah Williams in the courtroom? Can you point him out and describe something he's wearing? Uh, white shirt. Okay, Your Honor, let the record reflect he's identified the defendant. That objection record shall so reflect. How do you know Isaiah Williams? Okay. Is your mom Elizabeth Reese? Yes. Formerly Elizabeth Williams, correct? Okay. Um, did you give a statement to the police, to the Ann Arbor police in a, in about May of 2021? Does that sound about right? Okay. Um, did the police come to you and talk to you be, about being an emergency contact for your father while he was living in Chicago? Uh, being on an emergency, being his emergency contact. I didn't know. Okay. Did you learn it from the police? Did that surprise you? Do you have any relationship with your father? 
Okay. Do you, at the time that you were interviewed by police, were you even in communication at that time with your father? Uh, I wasn't. He was writing letters, but uh, I didn't contact. Okay. Um, you are how old today? Okay. Would you would have been about five or six years old when Olisa Williams disappeared? Does that sound about right? Okay. Do you have any memory of her at all? Just pictures. Okay. Have you talked to your father back when you still spoke to him um, about his his life in the 1980s and the 1990s, the earlier years when he was married, before, after he was married to your mom? Yes. Okay. Um, does he talk to you about the good times? Would he yeah. talk to you? Okay. Did he have a good memory of, of who you were? Yes. Did he seem to have a good memory of his, his past? Yes. Was there ever a time that you would bring up for instance, the abuse on your mom. How does he respond to that? Uh, he doesn't remember anything like that ever happened. It's all been told. Okay. So has he talked to you about his time being incarcerated in the 80s? Yes. Okay. Does he talk to you about his memory of that, him actually remembering that? Yeah. Okay. But when you bring up your mom, you said he says he has no memory of that. Is that correct? Does he tell you why he has no memory of that? Uh, it's been a few different stories. One story is uh, when he was incarcerated, he was supposed to have something planted in his teeth. Uh, the other time is it's like um, brain trauma from life. Did he ever tell you he was in a car accident and had a closed head injury? He didn't tell me, but I heard it. But he never directly told you that. Okay. Did you ever ask your father about Olisa Williams and what happened to her? Uh, at one time, I did. Okay. At, at the past when you would actually speak to him, is that fair to say? Tell me about what he would tell you. Uh, well, I thought memory didn't have anything to talk about. He said he had blocked all memory and he doesn't have anything to talk about. No, he didn't say okay. He just said he don't remember anything. Okay. Um, does your would your father at the same period of time talk to you about you guys as children, kind of happy childhood memories? Okay. He was he talked about your siblings, your older siblings, correct? Yes. Okay. Because he was in their life more than he was in yours. Is that fair to say? Yes. Uh, but when you bring up Alyssa, he says he doesn't remember, correct? Was there a few years back where you were no, ill? No, he doesn't remember. I apologize. Was that? No, he doesn't. Does he, When you ask him, he says, no, he doesn't remember. Is that correct? He has no memory of her. No, he didn't say that. He what does he say? What he said at the time when I asked him was that he didn't uh, remember what had happened. And he didn't want to talk about it. <laughs> He didn't remember and he didn't want to talk about it. Okay. Some years back, was there a time when you were you were ill, you were suffering some health problems? Just see. Okay. Like a cold or something like that. Did your dad come and see you? Yes. Was this another time that you had you were prompted to ask about Olisa and what happened to Olisa? That was the time. Okay. Is this the time that he told you he didn't remember and not to ask? Did he get upset at you for asking about that, that you remember? Uh, yes. Well, he was already upset because I had asked him first off about my mom, what happened to my mom. And then that's what it led into me asking about what happened to my sister. So you asked him about, when you say you were asking him about your what happened with your mom, were you speaking specifically about the abuse? Yes. And what was his response to that? Uh, and he doesn't remember anything. That's all been told to him what happened. So if I'm understanding that prompted you to then go on and ask about Olisa and you said he was already upset. Did this make him more upset? I would say, yeah. In the conversation. Well, hold, I just want to make sure I'm understanding your testimony because you said there was a conversation about your mom. And then I think you said your sister. Olisa, I was. I refer to her as my sister. Okay, that's what I want to make sure. Okay. Because and this all happened in the same event, these two, the conversation about your mom and the conversation about Elisa, it was all in the same 
sitting down the same situation. Okay. I don't have any further questions. Thank you. All right. Any questions? Good afternoon. Um, you said that when he, you asked him about certain periods of time, he has memory loss, or he says he doesn't remember. Okay, and that's when he becomes agitated and upset. Okay, and the follow-up questions about other events around the same time period that he says he lost his memory. Okay, so. He says he lost his memory from uh, one period of time to the next period of time. In other words, a certain span of a number of years, he has no recollection, correct? Or that's what he's told you over the years, correct? Ask about incidents during that period of time and he doesn't recall, he gets agitated, correct? Correct. Okay, no further questions. I would also ask you if you would ask your dad about M memories of specific period of times. Is it specific periods of times or specific memories in those periods of times? Does that make sense the way I asked it? Let me ask it this way. So you would ask about your mom, right? How he treated your mom during a specific period of time. Is that fair to say? Okay. And he would get agitated and upset about that, correct? Okay. Um, what if you asked your dad about a positive memory, not about the abuse of your mom, mom your mom, but positive memory about, for instance, your sister's childhood or something like that. Does he get agitated about that? No. Does he answer about what he remembers for that? Is that a yes? yes. I don't have any further questions. Thank you. Well, yeah, nothing else? All right. You may step down. Thank you, sir. The people call Kimberly. She's coming. Ma'am, if you could please come forward to be sworn. So. Take your seat, raise your right hand. Sign any swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth. Mm -hmm. And that's what the truth is up. You got it? Yes. Do I have a seat? Last name is spelled with the record. Uh, Kimberly Webb. Uh, K-I-M-B-E-R-O-Y-W-E-B-E. Hey, you may inquire, counsel. Thank you, May I call you Kim or Kimberly? Uh, Kim. Kim's fine. Okay. Um, do you know someone by the name of Isaiah Williams? Yes. Who is Isaiah Williams? Um, I okay. Do you see Mr. Williams in the courtroom? Yes. Can you point him out and describe something he's wearing? Uh, white shirt. Your Honor, let the record reflect Ms. Webb has identified the defendant. Record shall so reflect without objection. Let me ask this. Um, do you currently have a relationship with your father? Uh, no. Do you speak to him at all? Um, okay. You are how old now? Uh, 55. Okay. What's your date of birth, Kim? It's 11 1967. Did you ever witness any abuse on your mom at the hands of the defendant? Uh, yes. What did you witness? Um, I witnessed him um, uh, hitting, um, slapping her, um, knocking her down. Was that when your dad lived in the same home with you? Right, yes. Okay. At some point, did your dad not live in the same home with you anymore? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, did something happen to you when you were maybe two and a half, three years old? Uh, yes. Do you have, let me ask that right away, do you have any memory of what happened? Um, no, just that, uh, the only memory I have is that, you know, that something did happen. Okay. Did you ever see pictures of yourself uh, injured? Yes. What what pictures did you see of yourself? Um, I saw a picture uh, with um, I was a, just a, a child, young child with um, crutches and um, like a bandage on my arm. Do you have any any sort of uh, lingering medical issues now with your knees or your legs? Um, yeah, I have issues like when I uh, go to bend down, um, like my knees pop and stuff. 
Were you interviewed by the Ann Arbor Police Department back in 2014? Yes. Did you provide all the information that you knew of to the best of your memory back then? Yes. Okay. Uh, back in the summer of 1982, so July of 1982, um, was that the, if your birthday's November 21st, was that the summer before your 15th birthday? Is my math right on that? Um, 1982, yes. okay. At that time, where were you living? Uh, I was living out in um, uh, Sumter Township on the Watts Road. Who were you living with? Uh, my mom. Okay. Was your dad living there anymore at that time? No. Okay. At some point, did your dad come over with a baby? Yes. Okay. And was that baby Olissa Williams? Yes. All right. Had you had you seen Olissa before? Do you remember? Um, I think I had seen her maybe one time before that. Just so we're clear, in People's Exhibit 1, is this who we're talking about, the baby that your dad brought over? Yes. Okay. Who took this picture? Um, I did. You took this picture? Yeah. Okay. What do you remember happening when your dad brought the baby over to your house? Um, yes, I remember him bringing the, the baby over, um, and um, I don't remember him, like, staying um, I remember him leaving at some point in time. Um, his old baby was there. And um, so the, she wasn't like, um, um, you know, dressed. She, you know, basically she looked like she needed to be like cleaned up and stuff. So we, um, you know, they uh, cleaned her up um, and dressed her. We found some clothes and stuff um, for her. And um, so I put the clothes on her and stuff. And then I did her hair. Um, and um, after I did her hair, I was like, oh, she looks so pretty. And so then that's when I took the picture um, of her. At some point, did she leave with your dad? Uh, yes. Was it in the night or the early morning, if you remember? Um, yeah, I don't remember. Okay. When your dad left with Olisa, have you ever seen Olisa since? Um, we're talking 41 years. You've never seen her once in 41 years, correct? Okay. And who did she leave with when she left your house in Sumter Township? Uh, okay. When you did speak with your father, did you have any conversations with him about what happened to Olisa or where she was? Um, yeah, over the years, I would ask about, you know, what happened. And um, so originally, you would say, you know, that... Um, he said that, you know, someone had taken her, um, and then later he would say he didn't remember. Okay. Let me ask you, let's, let's back up a little bit. Um, do you recall a time when he was in Jackson prison and you took your daughter up to see him? Yes. Okay. Um, do you recall asking him about Olisa back then? Uh, yes. Do you remember what he told you back then when he was, was in Jackson prison? Um, at that time he, um, said he didn't remember. Do you remember what year that was? Um, let's see. It would have been, um, I think the year, but my, my daughter at that time was about, wasn't that old, she was maybe about two or three years old. Um, so she was born in, um, 1980. So this would have been the 80s that he had told you he didn't remember. Correct? No, she was, no my daughter was born in 1990. So Got it. Yeah. There we go. 1990. <laughs> there, that helped that, 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 yeah. me. <laughs> and so was this before your dad was released from prison for, for the assault on your mom, if you know? Um, yes. Okay. Um, this the indication that someone had taken her, um, do you remember when he told you that? Um, that was like early on, um, you know, he said he was um, in the park and um, fell asleep and woke up, you know, she wasn't there. Do you remember what park he told you that happened at? Um, I don't recall him ever giving like a specific location. Okay. Once your dad actually got out of prison in the 1990s, did you then again ask about Elisa and what happened to her? Um, yes, I, uh, a lot of times when I see him, I'm asking, so I did remember asking him again. And at that time he said, um, didn't remember. And he said that, um, he didn't remember. He said that, um, the state had implanted a chip. And that's when he had gotten out of prison, correct? 
All right, let's let's talk about that. Has your dad ever told you that he was in a car accident and that caused him to have lack of memory? Did your dad ever tell you he was poisoned and that caused a lack of memory? Uh, no. But your dad has told you that he has a lack of memory and doesn't doesn't remember what happened to Olisa, correct? Sure. And please tell us again, what was what was his reasoning to you as to why he can't remember where where Elisa is or what happened to her? Um, yeah, he said that um, I asked why he was in, in uh, prison, they planted a chip um, in his head and uh, erased his memory. And that would have been when he was incarcerated for the assault on your mom in 1984, correct? Okay. Let's talk about, aside from asking your dad about memories about Olisa, um, have you ever asked your dad about specifically about memories of, of him assaulting your mom? Um, yes. Does he talk about remembering that? Uh, yeah, he uh, always says he doesn't remember that. Will you, when you did speak with your dad, so specifically, let's talk about when he got out of prison in the 90s. Did you talk to him about the good times, your childhood? Um, yes. Now, does he talk to you about that? Does he exhibit having memory as to that? Um, yes. He will um, is he able to, when he talked to you back in the day, uh, talk to you about his own childhood and his past? Um, yeah, because I don't think he really talked a lot about his own past, you know, during that time. Okay. But he is able to talk about your past, your past with maybe you and Verna, your childhood. Right. He exhibits a memory as to that. Right. Okay. Uh, Kimberly, do you know of any close family relatives in Alabama close to your dad um, that lived in Alabama in 1982? No. Do you know of any close relatives even there now in Alabama? Um, I've got a cousin that lives there. But that wasn't in 1982, correct? Tell me about how your dad, his demeanor, how he acts when you confront him with either memories of your mom or memories of where is Olisa? How does he act towards you? You've already told us he says he doesn't remember, but how does he act? What's his demeanor? Um, yeah, a lot of times he just tries to, um, you know, um, talk about something else or um, get off the subject. Have you ever confronted him before about his ability to recall certain things, um, but not remember, not recall about Elisa? Have you ever actually confronted him on that? Um, yes, we've talked about that. Tell me what you said and what was his response. Um, yes, I've told him that a lot of times, um, you know, he seems to remember some things, like, you know, he remembers things about, like, the law. He remembers, um, you know, things about, um, you know, uh, our childhood. But then, you know, so it's kind of a selective, you know, what he chooses to remember. One moment, Yana. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that you haven't spoken to your dad in, in quite some time. How long has it been since you've spoken to your dad? Um, and probably at like, I think the last time I, I mean, it's been, it's been probably at the family funeral. Um, I'm trying to remember who passed away, but it's it's been two years. What decade would that have been in? Probably at least, at least maybe seven, eight years ago. Okay. And why don't you have any contact with him? Um, you know, because I, I told him, you know, I told him, you know, um, lets us know kind of what happened. And then he remembers the hurtful things that he's done to my mom um, that I didn't want to have a relationship. Thank you. I have no further questions. Cross-examination. Oh, my God. No questions, Your Honor. No question. All right, ma'am, you may step down. Thank you. We'll call Molly Reno. I think she's at her way. Okay.
Just come forward to be sworn. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Molly Reno, M O L L Y R E N O. All right. Before you begin, Council, I um I let uh, the Attorney General know that, and I think Ms. Reno had let the Attorney General know that I do know Ms. Reno. We haven't seen each other probably in 20 years, maybe? Probably a little over 20 years. We used to practice against each other. I will tell you that she was the only one that beat me. No, I was. <laughs> but but I, haven't, I haven't seen her in all that um, time, nor had any communication, but I wanted you to know that I do know of Ms. Reno. All right. Thank you, Judge. You may inquire. Thank you. Ms. Ms. Reno, uh, what is your um, I am licensed as an attorney and I practiced law until about 10 years ago. Were you licensed here in St. Michigan? Yeah. What kind of law? Um, I practice a variety, civil rights law, then like tenant law, divorce law, something like law. And were you interviewed by the Ann Arbor Police Department uh, as part of this case? Yes. About how many times do you think you're here? Um, I think two times in person, and then I might have had three phone calls. Um, I'm not sure. It's been a while. Um, you prior to coming in here, did you review um, some court filings from the Washtenaw County Family Court? I did. And were many of those filings Filings that you had filed in the family court case? Almost all of them. Okay. And were they also filings that you responded to um, uh, in terms of an attorney for Mr. Williams? So you had to respond to those filings? Yes. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, I have already shown people's 26 through 55. Um, I believe there's going to be a stipulation to the admission of these for just exam purposes only, and there's just going to be, um, I'll, I'll allow the court to have an opportunity to review all of them, but there's just going yeah. to be a few I'll highlight, I think, for being more expedient. All right. Is there going to be any objection to exhibits 26 through 55? No, not for exam purposes only. All right. Exhibits 26 through 55 are admitted. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Reno, you were able to have a chance to, um, it had been, what, 40 year, 41 years since you filed these documents. Is that fair? 40 and 41. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you had an opportunity to go through these and review these before your testimony today, correct? Yes. And um, you also put together a chronology of, of your memory based on reviewing those documents. So your involvement in this case, correct? Yes. And it, it was... A chronology based upon the documents. Okay. That helped you refresh your memories. Yes. How exactly. everything yeah. happened. Yes. Okay. Uh, were you contacted back in 1982, about June of 1982, by a then Denise Williams? I was. Okay. Were you retained by Miss Williams? Yes, I was. Okay. Uh, in what capacity? Um, she wanted a divorce and she needed a Domestic violence restraining order. Did you initially get going in June and July filing those requests for Miss Williams? I did, and I had to file for what's called a separate maintenance because she didn't meet the jurisdictional requirements for divorce. Um, and again, that is going to be Ms. Reno People's proposed. Your Honor, may I approach? Yes, you may. People's not proposed. People's Exhibit 26. Is this the complaint for custody and separate maintenance? You're going to have to help me because I don't do any civil. Is that <laughs> what we're referring to? Yeah. Okay. Is that because Ms. Williams and Mr. Williams at that time were residents of Ohio? Um, she was a resident of Michigan, but she hadn't been a resident of Michigan for the time period required for a divorce, which it might have been 180 days that you needed for to have jurisdiction to file for divorce. And 
Ms. Reno, it looks like you filed a couple different uh, personal protection orders for Ms. Williams, Peoples 27 and 28. Looks like one was um, filed and docketed June 17th and one was July 15th. Do you remember why there were two different, were they just different court dates or different files? Um, the first one is what's called an ex party restraining order, although maybe it was temporary restraining order. Um, and because the defendant hadn't been served with the paperwork, it was just for a short period of time, then to allow me to serve him with the paperwork so he could come in and object to the restraining order and to the custody order if he wanted to. So that time period expired. And so then I had to file again for another restraining order. I think that let's talk about people's exhibit 29. There was an order for temporary possession of the minor child. Who were we talking about question there? Alyssa Williams. Okay. And was custody at their given that at that time temporary custody to Denise? She was given an order of temporary possession, temporary custody, yes. At that point, what's the date on that? Uh, the date this was, well, the date is July 30th, 1982. At that time, had Elisa Williams been brought before the court? No. Um, had Isaiah been brought before the court? Had he been in the court yet? Um, I don't think so. I think he was served and he failed to appear. But he was served, you indicated. Yes. Okay. You filed multiple restraining orders for uh, Ms. Williams, now Ms. Fraser Daniel. Um, I believe uh, there was a five-year injunctive max order. What was that? Explain what that is. Yeah, um, at that time, the maximum period of time that you could have a restraining order was for five years. And so at the time of the divorce, I asked for that five-year restraining order and the judge granted it. Was that um, common back in the 1980s or 1982 to be able to get a restraining order or a five-year injunctive max? It was just starting to uh, be available. It was... Ms. Rita, looks like you also, according to the documents that we admitted, um, filed a... Another restraining order in April of 1983, October of 1983, and November of 1983. Is, would that have been the, the issues with service again? Um, same issues that you were talking about, making service that uh, Mr. Williams could object if he wanted to? Yes. What's a writ of habeas corpus? Um, well, at that time, um, um, Mrs. Williams, Louise Williams, um, told me that Mr. Isaiah Williams had knocked her down and taken the 10 month old child with this up. Maybe she was six months old at that time. And I was trying to get him before the court so that the court would order him to answer questions about the whereabouts of that infant, Alyssa. And so a writ of habeas corpus was an attempt, well, it actually worked. It was an order for him to bring Alyssa Susan Williams before the court. And in looking at the documents that we've already admitted, we have um, People's Exhibit 31, and we have People's Was exhibit 33. We've got the writ of habeas corpus and the order for writ of attachment. What's the difference between that? What's the order for writ of attachment? Um, the order for writ of attachment is akin to an arrest warrant in a civil case because Mr. Williams did not comply with the first order, which was to bring that minor child before the court. Ultimately, was there an uh, arrest warrant for contempt of court issued by the judge in this case? Yes. Well, who was the judge at that time? Um, judge Ross Campbell. 
and looking at people's admitted 35, is that the warrant for arrest for contempt? Uh, yes. What's the date on that? Uh, October 15th. October 7th, 1982, signed by the judge and filed with the court a few days later. At this point, had Mr. Williams brought the child to court yet? No. He had not produced the child, correct? And I believe that there was also an order to show cause for Mr. Williams to come before the court and answer as to why he beat. Denise Williams. And so when you asked me earlier about the order to show cause, I should have looked at it to see whether that was for the violation of the domestic restraining order when he beat her and choked her and put her in the hospital for two days. And did you were did you as her attorney get an opportunity to not only talk to your client, but review police reports with respect to that particular yes. call? Was Mr. Williams uh, convicted of anything? I believe that he was convicted of felonious assault. He was charged with assault with intent to commit murder, and I believe that he was uh, convicted of felonious assault. What was what would be a referral to the friend of the court? Why would a referral to the friend of court happen during these proceedings? Every time there's a divorce case, or at that time a separate maintenance case and there's a minor child, there's a referral to the front of the court to do an investigation to decide which parent is the, where the custody should be. Should it be with one parent? Should it be joined between both parents? So they make a recommendation. Was that done here? Yes, it was. And is that some of the documents reflected in People's 37 and 40, uh, the referral and the, the preliminary front of the court by? Yes. And what was the question? It, did that take place with their preliminary uh, recommendations from the front yeah. of the court as to who should have custody of the child? Yeah. yeah. Mr. Williams did not appear, and they uh, awarded custody to Denise. Well, at this point, had you or Denise seen the baby? Had the baby been brought to court? No. By Mr. Williams or anybody else? Nobody else. At some point, it looks like you filed a petition to amend the pleadings. Um, to, was this to change it from separation to a divorce? jurisdictional limit by having resided in the state of Michigan for the required period of time. And what she really wanted was the divorce, in addition to the protection against domestic violence and possession of the child. Uh, Alyssa Susan Williams. So we are able to, I was able to amend it, and the judge granted the order to amend. <laughs> is this the copy of People's 39? Is that a copy of ultimately I should ask with the divorce? Was the divorce granted? Yes, the divorce was granted. Do you remember when the divorce was granted? Uh, not off the top of my head. Is that a copy of the divorce record uh, yes. confirming the divorce between Mr. Williams and Ms. Williams was yes. ordered? Okay. Now, Ms. Riedel, it looks like there was a new order for writ of attachment in January of 1983. Had Alyssa been produced for the court yet? No. Is this why there was a new writ done?
Yes, this um, because he failed to bring Melissa before the court, and yes, that this was a writ of attachment, which in effect was an arrest warrant. And so now this is now the second, essentially, not essentially, this is the second arrest warrant in the, the court file for Mr. Williams for failing to bring Melissa Williams to court. I believe so, yes. Um, and then on January 24th, yes, absolutely. Yes, this was for his arrest or failure to bring Melissa before the court. Ultimately, it looks like Judge Campbell ordered a new ex parte order to Peter on January 24th, 1983. Does that look accurate to you? In the best of uh, your memory of the filings? Yes. And in that document, and this is People's Exhibit 44 for the record, it does indicate that Isaiah Williams was ordered before the court in January to tell the court time and place where he last saw the minor child and name of persons to whom he entrusted possession of the minor child. Is that correct? Yes. Um, ultimately, um, was there a hearing held for this very purpose February 1st of 19? There was a, a hearing held, and I believe that that is the date of the hearing. Uh, we're going to talk about that hearing, uh, but let's talk quickly. Well, let's actually talk about it. <laughs> let's just talk about it. It's on, on my mind to talk about it. Were you present in, on February 1st at that hearing? I was. Okay. And at that time, was Isaiah Williams present at that hearing? He was. Was that in front of Judge Ross Campbell? Yes, it was. Was Denise there as well? Um, at that time, did Mr. Williams uh, take the stand and testify? Yes, he did. Okay. Um, was he sworn under oath, if you recall? Oh, I recall. He was sworn under oath. What did Mr. Williams say? with respect to uh, Olissa Williams and where she was? He said, Mr. Williams said that um, he had Alyssa, I believe she was 10 months old at that time. He said she was in the car with him and that he drove in Ann Arbor and he drove and parked very close to Island Park, which is over near the U of M hospital. And he fell asleep and she was, in, as I recall, the back seat of the car, but some place in the car. And he fell asleep, and when he woke up, he said she was gone. Was Mr. Williams, well, let me ask first. You said Island Park in Ann Arbor, is that correct? Yes. Is there a body of water that runs through that particular park? Yes. What What body of water runs through that park? It's a stream, and it might be the Sharon River. Okay. And was Mr. Williams asked if he reported this taking of Alyssa to the police? Yes, I found it, um, it just didn't seem credible to me that a 10 month old could get out of the car on her own while he was asleep. And so I asked him, well, if she was missing when you woke up, did you report this to the police? And he said, no. So Mr. Williams' versions of events is that he fell asleep in the car and that he woke up and she was gone, correct? Correct. He did not report to the police, correct? Correct. Did he indicate to you whether she had any possessions in the car that were also taken or whether they were still there? I don't recall that 
he said one way or the other. And I want to add that I also asked him, did you report this missing infant to any other authority other than the police? And he said no. And when you say any other authority, what were you referring to? Um, I just thought he should have reported that any responsible parent would report a child who's missing to the police or to anybody else, like any other authority. I didn't have a particular authority in mind, but I just wanted to cover all the bases. Yep. Who did you tell? And did Mr. Williams indicate if he told you anybody that that this disappeared, that he told anybody about the disappearance no. of this child? And I asked him, did he tell his sister, who he indicated he was living with off and on that summer, did you tell her that Alyssa was missing? And he said no. And then he also indicated he was living with the next wife that summer. And I said, did you tell her that this 10-month-old was missing? And he said no. Speaking of where he was living, his attorney filed some documents. His attorney was Andrew Fanta. Is that correct? Correct, yeah. He filed some documents um, listing on there some information about where Mr. Williams had, had lived, correct? Yes. Okay. I'm handing you People's Exhibit 48. I'm going into page five of that document, the affidavit in support of motion to dismiss for want of jurisdiction. Uh, was that a document you recall being filed by Mr. Williams' attorney? Yes. Okay. Did it indicate at that time the residence that Mr. Williams was staying in in 1982? Okay. Yes. Um, in this affidavit, which was signed by Mr. Williams. Um, and it was just one affidavit. It states that Mr. Williams was living as president of the state of Ohio and that he returned to Michigan because of his mother's illness in June of 1982. And he temporarily resided with his brother in Pittsfield uh, Township in, it says Ann Arbor, Oh no, Pittsfield Road, Ann Arbor. And that he also resided in the Paradise Hotel on Ann Street in Ann Arbor. Um, and that then he left for the state of Alabama during the month of July, 1982. And it says that he, Mr. Williams in this affidavit, stating, swearing, that during the months of July and August 1982, that he worked at a maintenance department in Sherfield in uh, Alabama. It's at Sherfield, Alabama? That's what this okay. says, S-H-E-R-F-I-E-L-D. So that document confirmed two locations in, in Washtenaw County, correct? That he had been residing in and one in Inkster, Wayne County, correct? Yes. And then confirmed, or, go ahead, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, two or three in the Ann Arbor area. And, and it also confirmed that in July of 1982, he left the state of Michigan to go to Alabama. Right? Yes. Uh, after Mr. Williams made these statements on the record in front of Judge um, Campbell, what did Judge Campbell do? Um, Judge Campbell put him in jail for contempt. Did Judge Campbell also order a psychiatric evaluation for him? Yes, he did. And those are confirmed, that's confirmed in the documentation that you uh, reviewed as well, correct? Yes. yes. Okay, and that's the record now that was going to be Exhibits 45, Order for Psychiatric Evaluation, and uh, Exhibit 47, Order for Diagnostic Commitment of Defendant. Do you recall approximately how long Mr. Williams was incarcerated for contempt of court based on the statements he made in court? I think it was uh, for 60 days. Um, Eventually, did you go back to court because they were going to release Mr. Williams from jail? Yes. Did you file uh, some documentation to try to prevent that from happening? Absolutely. I was very upset that he could make such contemptuous statements, such unbelievable statements about the whereabouts of that child, and um, then be released from jail. 
So I was attempting to persuade the judge to keep him in jail until he told the truth. Is this People's Exhibit 49? Yeah. That's your, your opposition, plaintiff's opposition to release from jail? Yes. Ultimately, was Mr. Williams released from jail? To my great disappointment, he was released from jail. Yeah. Um, was he required at that time to give any further statements as to the whereabouts of Elisa Williams? I don't recall that he was. Did he ever bring Elisa Williams to court with him? No. You've already testified regarding some additional uh, restraining orders, the five-year restraining orders uh, that you filed on behalf of uh, Ms. Williams, now Fraser Daniels, this one such order. That's for the record, Your Honor, people's exhibit. Thank you. What am I looking at here in People's Exhibit 53? Um, this is the prosecuting attorney, and the prosecuting attorney appears on behalf of, at that time, minor children and divorces, and it, it gives them an opportunity to place an objection on the record if one is warranted, and it's kind of a pro forma thing. Okay, and this is whether or not. At this time, it would have been Mary Carroll, who's the assistant prosecuting attorney, would have objected to the divorce on behalf of Elisa, and she did not. She did not, yeah. Was it ever established on the record, if you recall, during these contempt proceedings, or the divorce proceedings, or the child custody proceedings, that I stay away from the bypass of the I would have to refresh my memory with the documents. Okay. I do recall that he was not a biological father, but I don't remember um, if that was placed on the record or not. Back in 1982, 83, um, was there a legal presumption um, of, of a defendant being a father that you'd have to get passed if it wasn't placed on the record or something like that? There was a legal presumption that if a couple was married, <laughs> that the husband is the biological father of every child born to the wife during the marriage. And that could be challenged with paternity taxes. But in the absence of that, um, it's the husband's Back when you were representing Denise Williams, now Fraser Daniel, um, was Denise indicating at that time that she wanted Child, uh, child support or anything like that from Isaiah Williams. She did not. She wanted him to stay away from, yeah. From what was her purpose? What did she want from these hearings? Well, what she wanted was her child back. She wanted to know where is your child. And she wanted possession of the child as she had been awarded both by the Ohio court and the Michigan court. And in terms of your filings from separate custody and maintenance over to official divorce proceedings. Um, did Mr. Williams, through his attorneys, continue to contest the divorce? No. They did not contest the divorce? No, the attorney contested jurisdiction for the divorce, and the judge ruled that she had been in the state of Michigan long enough and was entitled. There was no other contesting of the divorce.
I have no further questions. Thank you, yes, Mr. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. Chuck, the attorney, uh, Andrew Fanta, entered an appearance solely for the purpose of contesting jurisdiction. Okay. It was not, it was not a general appearance. And that, that appearance he filed, correct me if I'm wrong, with that affidavit that we just talked about where you laid out the addresses for Mr. Mr. Williams and all that. Right. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Reno. Cross-examination. One moment, Your Honor. Yes. Was the, I'm sorry, good afternoon. Um, was the biological father ever involved in any of the court proceedings? Um, no, not that I recall. Was he ever named at all? All that he was named, but he might have been. And to your knowledge, were any of those residences that were listed in the affidavit ever investigated or followed up on? Um, Mr. Williams' mm -hmm. residences, yes. Um, the out-of-state ones as well? Uh, it was the out-of-state residence that was investigated, but I only know that by looking at paperwork. It wasn't part of the divorce case. Okay. So when you say um, paperwork, you're not talking about the filings that happened in 82, 83. You're talking about subsequent stuff that happened like 20, 30 years later. I'd have to look at the paperwork to tell you how much later, but it was not part of the divorce proceedings. Okay, so in 82, 83, when the divorce proceedings were going on, the residences that were provided by the attorney who only appeared to establish jurisdiction, they were not investigated at that time, is what you're saying, correct? Uh, Asking investigated by who? Anyone. I wouldn't know. Okay. So to your knowledge, no. I didn't know. Okay. Thank you. Anything no else? Thank you. Thank you very much. People call Ben Peters. Um, can we do this? Let me, because we've been going about two hours, I've got to get my staff a little bit of a break here, about 15 minutes. So if we can reconvene about 4 30. How many more witnesses are you um, just? I have three today, but I think I'm only going to call two. Betty Peters will be very quick. Bruno will be very quick. I'm going to leave Mr. Uh, Detective Ivers Iverson for tomorrow since he's going to be late. Peters. All right. So, so the next witness is very quick. You think? I think so. Let's get him up here. Then. Let's let's just do it. I swear, the firm and testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you got. Yeah, state your first and last name for the record. Go ahead. You want to spell it? Can you spell it? Spell it. All right. Thank you. Inquire. Miss Peters, can you hear me okay? Okay. If I ask something that's confusing, just tell me to repeat it. If you don't understand my question, if you can't hear me, anything like that, okay? Do you know somebody by the name of Isaiah Williams? Yes. Okay. Who's Isaiah Williams to you? Okay. Do you see him here today? Yes. Okay. Can you point him out? Describe him? Point it to the table. Is he, is he wearing a piece of clothing? Is he wearing anything that's descriptive that you can describe for us? White top. Thank you. That, let the record reflect that Ms. Peters has identified the defendant. Without objection, so the record shall so reflect. Ms. Peters, how old are you today? 85. What did you previously do for employment? Um, nurse. Okay. Were you an L LPN? Okay. And where did you work? University Hospital. Okay. Is that the University of Michigan Hospital in Ann Arbor? Yes. 
Okay. How long did you work there? Um, a total of 20 years. Back in the summertime of 1982, so I'm going back pretty far, okay? Do you remember seeing a baby by the name of Alyssa Williams? Yes. Okay. Who did you see the baby with? Uh, Who did you see the baby with? Who was the baby with at that time? My brother. Okay. And is that your brother Isaiah? Yes. Okay. And just to make sure we're actually talking about the same person, I'm going to show you what's been marked as Exhibit 1. Is this the baby we're talking about? Yes. Does that look like the same baby? Yes. Okay. Ms. Peters, when you saw Alyssa with, with your brother um, in the summer of 1982, did, you, did he ask you to watch her so he could run some errands? No. How did you see her then? Tell me what you remember. He was just showing me the baby. Showing me the baby. Okay. He was showing me the baby. Did she seem like she was a healthy baby? Did she seem like she was a healthy baby? Do you know about how old she was? Okay. Where were you at when he showed you the baby? At home. At home. Where Where was home back then? Where I lived at. Um, okay. I tried to in Ann Arbor. In Ann Arbor. Did Did Isaiah stay for a while with the baby? Yes. Okay. After that time in the summer of 1982, did you ever see Alyssa again with your brother? Did you ever see her again at all? Have you ever asked your brother what happened to that baby? Not really, no. When you say not really, um, it's dead. Okay, tell me, tell me why not? Why, why have you never asked your brother? I was more concerned about Okay, you were worried about your your own children, right? Okay. Um, did the defendant ever tell you um, about something happening to her at a park? Okay. Do you recall talking to Detective Iverson um, back in 2011? That would have been quite a long time ago, but okay. I don't. I, I believe that's him. Okay. Long time. Long been about 12 years, is that correct? Okay. So would you happen to remember telling him that that Isaiah, your brother, told you that the baby disappeared in a park when he woke up in the car? I didn't, I didn't say that. Okay, so you didn't say that. Ms. Peters, did you or your brother have any close relatives or family in, in Alabama back in 1982 or 83? I don't have no families that I can remember that was close to me. Not and nobody that you knew that was close to Isaiah in Alabama either, correct? Oh, that's speculation. I, if, if you well, know. If she knows. So, I, I knew my father had relatives down there, but I don't know I was not close to them. Do you happen to know whether Isaiah was close to any of them? No. Okay. I don't have any other questions. Thank you, Ms. Peters. Okay. But the defense attorney oh, oh, might have hold questions on. for you. Hold on. we got to let the other side ask you some <laughs> questions. Okay. we got to let the other side ask you some questions. Okay. I don't have any questions, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Peters. Thank you, Ms. Peters. You may step down. All right. Is this our last? Okay. Ma'am, please come forward to be sworn. Judge, real quick. Yes. Just doesn't affect anything. The mass amount of documents that I admitted Molly Reno that started with exhibit 26. Yes, ma'am. 55. Yes, ma'am. Um, just make a note that 32 is not admitted. It was a police report that I was not admitting. I just didn't help, but I forgot. Okay, so 32 we will not be admitting. Yes, it was refreshing the witness, but it was not admitted. Okay. Is that right? Okay. Got it. All right. Hold on a second. We need a defendant. Oh, yeah. I know. I'm ready to roll too, but we, we got to have him. <laughs> Do we? That was, that was a good job, Ms. Woods, in objecting that your client. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we needed someone to prolific.
preliminary. Well, no, no, that's okay. That's okay. You know, sometimes you just need to stand up and be counted, but don't worry about it. <laughs> He certainly probably does not want his presence late. <laughs> yeah, certainly. I'm sure he does not. Sometimes we want things a certain way, and I had peace, right, Miss <laughs> Wilder? Back on the record in the case of the people of the state of Michigan versus Williams. Now. <laughs> so I'm just wearing for the testimony about the gift of the truth. Have a seat. State your first and last name and spell it with the record. Perna Williams Anderson, W I, Perna B E R N A, Williams W I L L I A M S, Anderson A N D E R S A. Thank you, ma'am. You may be seated. May I proceed, Your Honor? Yes, you may. Ms. Williams Anderson, good afternoon. Uh, do you know somebody by the name of Isaiah Williams? Yes, I do. Who is Mr. Williams to you? Do you see him in the courtroom? Yes. Can you point him out and describe something he's wearing? Okay, Your Honor, let the record reflect Ms. Williams Anderson has identified the defendant. That objection record shall so reflect. Um, Ms. Williams Anderson, uh, some of your siblings have testified about their relationship with their father. What's your relationship like with your father? Do you have one? Um, not as of two years ago. Before two years ago, did you have an okay relationship with your father? Often. Okay. What's your date of birth? Okay. Ms. Williams Anderson, did you ever witness any abuse on your mother? Uh, at the hands of your dad, Isaiah Williams. Yeah. Who is your mom? Elizabeth Reese. Okay. And what did you witness when you lived with your mom and your dad? Uh, multiple beating, uh, punches, two knockouts, um, just multiple beatings. Okay. At some point, did your mom um, move out or move you and the children out or, or have your dad move out? Did she separate? Yes. Okay. Um, was there ever a time that you had to intervene in a particular assault? Okay, can you tell us about a time that that happened? Um, I don't remember all of it. I just remember going to the kitchen, getting a knife, just trying to get him off of her. Do you remember if they were still together or if they were separated during this time? I don't remember. Okay. Um, did you ever see somebody by the name of Olissa Williams? Yeah. Okay, uh, let's let's talk about um, in, in respect to your birthday. You said your birthday was July 22nd, correct? Yes. Yeah. Did you see Olissa um, any time before your birthday in 1982? So before mm -hmm. July 2nd, 22nd, 1982. What, what birthday would that have been for you? Um, that would have been my 16th birthday. Okay, was that a memorable birthday for you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's, it's and did you see Olisa before that that big party, if you recall? Yes, I believe. Okay. And how did is it that you saw Olisa? Uh, my dad brought her to our house at the night. Okay. And what house was this at that you were living at? We lived on Overwall. Okay. And what city was that? I think it's actually called in Boston. We used to call it Carlton Mill, but I think they actually know it. Okay. And at that time, who were you living with? My mom, Elizabeth. Okay. Was, did you have any of your siblings that were at home? Yes, Kim, Sean, Scott. Sean is deceased now. When your dad brought Elisa mm -hmm. over to the house, was Kim there? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And when we're talking about Elisa, I want to make sure we're talking about the same person. I'm going to show you people's exhibit one. Do you recognize this picture? Yes. Who's that? That's Alisa. Do you, do you recognize this picture for any other reason? 
think that's one of them here. Okay. Um, was this picture, if you recall, taken the, the date that your dad brought her to the house? I know at least one of the time. Okay. Okay. Um, how long did your dad stay there with, with Elisa at the house, if you remember? Okay. Um, what condition was Elisa in, if you remember, when your dad brought her over? How did she look? Okay. Um, did you and your sister do anything with her, her clothing or her hair? Um, I bring my sister home in here. She's been over a few times, and each time she's been over here. Did you and your sister dress her in any different clothing, if you remember? Change her clothing. Um, I'm sure we did. Okay. After this time in July of 1982, before your birthday, um, did you ever see Alyssa Williams ever again? With or without your father, did you ever see her again? Okay. Have you ever had any conversations with your father about Alyssa and, and where she was or what happened to her? <laughs> Your father, um, well, let me ask this. Is is there any particular reason you've not had these these conversations with your dad about this this baby that was missing? Um, I think mainly because I wanted it to be a positive outcome. So I think I'm lying. I was scared. Were you scared to talk to him about it? Yes. Okay. He always says he blacks out. Let's talk about that. Um, you said he talks about blacking out. How long has your dad been talking about issues with blacking out? Um, he said that when he attacked my mom in 83, 84, he blacked out. He didn't remember that. Um, he said when people I guess, asked him about Lisa, he said he blacked out in the park. Has your dad ever told you that he has a, a head injury that causes him not to have memories of, of himself or his life? Okay. Tell me about that. What does he say about that? Uh, he said he, that they're tracking him when he was, when he went to, when he was sentenced to prison for my mom's attack. He was writing letters and said that he was, um, that they put something inside of him, that they were tracking him, that he was following him. You said he would write you letters. Would you also visit with him? Yes, I did. Would he tell you the same thing about the chip being implanted and not having any memories? Would this be in um, about 1989 or 1990? Yes, I had my first time in 89. I would take him probably in 90. <clears throat> Did your father ever tell you about a car accident that he got into maybe in 1994 that, that caused a head injury and memory loss? Did your father ever tell you that he was poisoned and that was the reason for a head injury and memory loss? You were interviewed by Detective Iverson back in 2014. Does that sound about right? Okay. Um, at that time, I think you had indicated you had seen your father about 10 years prior at, at your brother's at your brother's funeral. Does that sound right? You hadn't seen him before that? Or you hadn't seen him since before that time, correct? Okay. Um, you began having some regular phone conversations with him right around that time of, of your brother's funeral. Does that sound right? Tell tell me about why. Um, when he came to my brother's funeral, he had um a woman with him by the name of Felina, and they had a child. Um, so I discovered I had another sibling. Um, so I stayed in contact with him with that sibling. Um, after that, they had two more children. Um, and so I stayed in contact with them, would go visit them in their home in Detroit, and also in Missouri. And speaking of those those children he had with Helena, she's, she's since passed, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Was Helena at the time, if you know, was she the primary caregiver of those children? Yes. So if Isaiah claims to have been the primary caregiver, would that be true? Okay. 
you assist in, in helping with those children now? Yeah. Um, Ms. Williams Anderson, are you aware of any close family or relatives in Alabama, either close to you or to your brother Isaiah, or your father Isaiah, excuse me, that would have taken Olisa? Um, back in the 90s, um, you said you lived on Oakville Waltz, correct? Was that the street? Um, I didn't live there in the 90s. I, I 80s, I'm sorry. You Did you live there in the 80s? Yeah, up until 84, I went to Kansas City. I've been in Kansas City. In 19, about 1983, was there an incident that you recall where a shovel came came up in the house that nobody knew what it was? I'm not, I'm not sure what happened, but I remember they came digging in our backyard. Do you recall if anybody of authority, like the police, ever found anything in your backyard? I don't have any further questions. The defense attorney might have some questions. Thank you. Thank you so much. Press examination. And thank you very much for your testimony. You may step down. Okay. All right. So, and as we're looking tomorrow, then you're looking at two witnesses for tomorrow. Three witnesses. Um, one should be very short. And okay. Two should be that long. All right. So three witnesses tomorrow. Two o'clock for everybody else. Um, and then we'll come back and do that. All right. Court stand in recess. Stand adjourned for the day.